and you guys have no idea who's in the house. And the person I'll be talking to is one of the founders of EduAction here in Uzbekistan. And this man needs no introduction. For the consultancy agencies, I work for the pro in production. I work for the uh, Marvin brand. Mm -hmm. uh, it's company which produces uh, juice Dena. I'm sure everyone knows about Dena. So what are some timeless soft skills you can think of people should work on if they want to have a secure future in terms of employment? Uh, let me ask you this question yeah. real quick. If IDP Australia ever asked you to change the website to ask the applicants yeah. to ch choose their gender and there are yeah. five options, would yeah. you accept it? Go and work for the big companies mm -hmm. to get the taste of the corporate life. Yeah. What is like to work for the organization where there's 400, 500, 600, 1,000 people are working? What I tell myself, even if this school is going to fail, I just go and do something else. Like, yeah. And that makes you have actually a very dangerous player. Every employee who work for us sign up the certain um, uh, papers where actually one of them is explicitly stating that if we're going to find out that they're breaking the certain rules which is placed by the company, uh, that we have a right to prosecute them. Uh, what do you look for in a good spouse? I like watching animes, Japanese animes. Anime. <laughs> And now we're talking. Now we're talking. What's your favorite anime? Yeah. After this podcast, my feeling is everyone's going to start watching anime. <laughs> huh? Hey, folks. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Adustria Muse. I'm your host, Muhammad Ali, here. Today, I'm going to be talking to another fantastic guest. And you guys have no idea who's in the house. And the person I'll be talking to is one of the founders of EduAction here in Uzbekistan. And this man needs no introduction. So if you guys are excited for today's episode, keep watching. All right, without further ado, meet Mr. Akmal Ahrar. Mr. Akmar, thanks for coming on the show. Well, thank you for inviting. I'm really, really happy that you actually asked me to come to this <laughs> podcast. I have been watching and I have been uh, following you. Oh, and really? I was thinking about it. When he's going to invite me? <laughs> oh, that, that, so if you, if you wouldn't invite me, I would ask for myself. <laughs> believe me. Uh, that, means, that means a lot to me. That yeah. means so much. Right. As I said, uh, when I was watching your podcast, actually, I kind of like the idea that you're bringing up the different topics, different uh -huh. subjects to the people yeah. rather than the English and IELTS, mm -hmm. because this is what I thought about it. Then we should mm -hmm. change our podcast subjects as well a little bit. So probably, guys, thank you. See, we're going to do some changes as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just got fed up with IELTS and decided to do something different well, for a change. Don't you know? say that you're fed up with the IELTS. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, that's not good. That's not good, right? Uh, yeah. But I'm sure that, that there is lots of other subjects that needs to be discussed that uh -huh. can be interesting to other people other than the IELTS right. and other than the English yeah. anyway. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you say we talk a little about uh, you first? Would you like to introduce to our audience, to you know, first comers, people who are watching this podcast for the first time, or oh. people who may not know you? Okay. Yeah. Tell, well, tell them a little about yourself, please. Probably not many people knows about me because I don't mm. really talk about myself, uh -huh. especially about my uh, personal life or about my experiences. Mm. But uh, well, let's say, thank you for giving that opportunity. So uh, my name is Akmal Ahror Hajaev. Uh, yes, short version is Akmal Ahror, as <laughs> I said earlier. Uh, and I told you about the, some stories about my surname anyway. So I was born in Tashkent. Uh, and, uh, shall I say my age as well? Or is that <laughs> right, <if> you want <laughs> to. No, let's keep it secret then. Uh, so I graduated, I studied and graduated from the Tashkent Financial Institute. So my specialization was actually accounting and finance, mm -hmm. uh, bachelor's degree on accounting finance. It was back in 2005, like, yes, back in 2005. Uh, I worked for, then I had the opportunity to go to London, uh, to UK actually, not only London, but UK. Mm -hmm. And I learned English in UK actually. So my English wasn't really good mm -hmm. when I went to UK. So that's the place where I start practicing my English and improving my English. Uh, and of course, uh, after the while, after the time when I improved my English, I decided to study something else. And I studied the business course called ABA it's association of business executives so it was about uh, 
managing business basically so that was the education uh, i had i had the many trainings on the different fields but basically this is the m- main ones that i can talk about it anyway and also i had worked for many organizations and uh, starting from the governmental organization mm-hmm. big companies and for the foreign companies private companies mm-hmm. small companies big companies in the different field uh, i started my official career in the insurance company uh, so w- this is one of the biggest experience one of the most remembering part of, of my life anyway then also i had the opportunity to work with a company called sgs group it's a Swi- uh, switzerland company it's one of the biggest companies in the field of uh, international certification and inspection i'm sure i don't know uh, whether you're aware or not there is an international standard for the certain things like a quality control standard mm-hmm. there is a <coughs> safety control standard so that's the organization w- that was actually auditing the companies in uzbekistan and giving up the certificate stating that this organization is uh, set to certain standards set mm-hmm. by the uh, by international standards anyway then i work for the consultancy agencies i work for the pro- in production i work for the uh, marvin brand mm-hmm. uh, it's company which produced uh, juice dena i'm sure everyone knows about dena so i work for that company as well uh, but in 2017 uh, my university friend uh, who is well known in Uzbekistan Umid John mm-hmm. uh, he invited me to join his team so he was at that time he was uh, running the consulting agency called oh. Edu Action under that brand and he had a huge plans and uh, ideas about how to develop this business and actually bring something new to Uzbekistan and one of them was actually the having the uh, cooperation and partnership with IDP Australia so I start working for him uh, as a as a director as a manager to study abroad consultancy then a year after we set up the IDP we had a uh, let's say uh, we finalized our agreement with IDP and become an official test center in Uzbekistan in 2018 and starting from I think it was 20th of January our first official test that take place as Edu Action Exam Center and since then I'm the head of the Eduaction Testing Center. Wow, so that, it's that, it's brief. Yeah, it's a brief. <laughs> that, was, that was that's impressive. This yeah. man right here has got a. This it's probably the most comprehensive CV I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's just mind blowing. What a, what an impressive career. Thank you. Something to look up to. Something uh, so admirable. Yeah. Right. I, I I'm super super pumped to ask you to to be asking you today some questions about your career in more mm. detail yeah but before we get to that part would you like to tell us a little about what you were like back in high school so who was mr akmal back in high school well yeah before all these things started well i studied well at the school to be mm-hmm. honest i was one of the uh, well i had a great mm-hmm. great Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I when I graduated from the school, I think I only had all my scores was five. Actually, mm-hmm. yeah, I was quite good student. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. But uh, let's say life has got uh, his surprises. Mm-hmm. Uh, first year uh, when I uh, actually I failed my exams to the university mm-hmm. first year, despite the fact that I was good students mm-hmm. and I had a good grade apparent in real life it wasn't enough that was something quite surprising for me at that time so i failed the first first year but it's all right uh, i took my chance uh, to rethink the certain things and i went to the some teachers to help me to uh, get uh, uh, to improve my knowledge especially mm-hmm. in mathematics mm-hmm. and in english actually mm-hmm. and then i was able to admit to the university mm-hmm. and i did well at the university as well to be honest mm-hmm. Uh, as far as I can recall, actually, I have got the, we call it like a, uh, graduate, uh, a diploma with, uh, with merit, you can say, mm-hmm. uh, which is in English, but in, in our terms is like a Qzal diploma, red mm-hmm. diploma. I have mm-hmm. it. So I have got uh, pretty much, uh, almost, uh, mm-hmm. uh, every subject with the five, mm-hmm. I guess with the high marks. 
Mm -hmm. Only a couple of subjects uh, which I was like uh, on average, but other than that, it was like a uh, high grade. So I studied mm -hmm. very good, to be honest. So I can say that I was quite uh, obsessed with the education at that time. And you decided to major in accounting, right? That's yes. a quite an interesting choice, right? Uh, first year, actually, I wanted to, uh, I applied uh, for the insurance. So I was going to uh, study at the insurance field. Then I failed. Then I thought about that, that what kind of options I have mm -hmm. and which field will bring more, let's say, I be, might become a more successful. Mm -hmm. than, but by success, you meant like you were after. Yeah, pay. something like that. <laughs> Definitely. Something along those, those yeah. lines, just like everyone I, else. I know that the accounting yeah. was something interesting for me uh -huh. and I know that the accounting uh, always was around. I mean, uh -huh. I thought that it's not going to get, uh, mm -hmm. it's, there will be job for me it's all like the time. Secure job. Yeah, secure job. Job traditional jobs like teaching, medicine, yeah. accounting, you always Something need. Like but now I reconsider yeah. some of my decision anyway. So okay. I, well, account, I don't think so. The accounting mm -hmm. will be uh, after 10 years mm -hmm. or 15 years in mm -hmm. same as it, it's now anyway. Uh, uh, why not? So what makes well, you with think the, well, accounting with is the go with away? development of all these technologies uh -huh. and the optimization of the certain things, uh -huh. then probably we'll come to some point that uh, there will be just bookkeeping. When mm -hmm. you just enter the data, that's it. And everything mm -hmm. will be go automatically to the uh, shareholders and stakeholders, like in the form of the report. They don't really have to sit and make up yeah. the reports or anything else. But this has come to the, when we discuss about accounting as well. But the finance is a different story. Finance is a different field. That the finance will be in place that when you analyze the data, when you... Uh, provide the data uh, to make a decision, let's say, especially. So the finance is different, but the accounting probably will mm -hmm. change and it's not going to be in the form that it's currently. So to all those people out there, young people, students wanting to take up accounting yeah. as a major in their university, you're suggesting they should think again, right? Well, I would say, yes, think again, <laughs> first of all, but also... Uh, well, it's this is a general question. Mm -hmm. There is, if you have a look to the five years, I mean, for the last five years, with all development of these technologies, mm -hmm. I think any field mm -hmm. is not secure. Same as yeah. the accounting, to be honest. Even the teaching now, I believe yeah. uh, the way of you teaching the IELTS or English has been different from what you have done it before. Yeah. So there is nothing secure. If you think that, that mm -hmm. something will last Mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. you are you are making mistakes basically mm -hmm. that because uh, with the development of these technologies uh, like especially ai right yeah especially ai certain thing is uh happening very fast mm -hmm. for example let's say if the development of the certain technology certain mm -hmm. process used to take like a 30 40 50 years mm -hmm. to be in place now it's gonna it's happening in 10 years in 15 years mm -hmm. even if you have a look at the cycle of the life cycle of the company you can see that the some of the companies who used to last for 30 days for uh, 30 years or 50 years now their life cycle is about five years 10 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. and they don't last even 15 years yeah. So look at the these major big companies. Mm -hmm. If you have a look, they just only have like a ten or fifteen years of history. Uh, so everything is happening very quickly. So you need to have an ability to adapt to the new new reality. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about it all the time. You need to uh, work on yourself. You need to improve your skills. You need to get the better qualification, more information. I mean, you have to constantly work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Other, otherwise, you will be you will lose whatever. Yeah. I mean, you won't be able to achieve your goals. That, that's the reality. So, if you want to keep your edge, you need to be constantly reinventing yourself. Definitely, redefining that's, yourself. Definitely, definitely. Even if I believe in the future, mm -hmm. uh, the IT will have a major influence on every field, mm -hmm. like we can see it now. So, kind of like accountancy probably will be something that mixed with the. Uh, information technology. Mm -hmm. Same with the marketing right mm -hmm. now. Probably it's going to be a mixture of something like related with the chat GPT, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So they, so you really need to think about uh, that direction. That mm -hmm. where uh, often we talk about when we discuss this kind of topic with the other people, we talk about the soft skills. So basically, the things that will keep you. 
uh, employed. Employed. Yeah. It's uh, having you soft skills. Yeah. Ability to adapt to the new reality. Uh-huh. Work on yourself constantly. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's for you. It's it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be difficult. Yeah. So, what are some other soft skills you can think of off the off the top of your head that will serve people lifetime? Like, so what are some timeless soft skills you can think of people should work on if they want to have a secure future in, term of, in terms of employment? Okay, uh, I'll say something about related to the, with my own experience with mm-hmm. the ChatGPT. Mm-hmm. So recently I got interested with the ChatGPT. I have got the pay, I even got, got the paid version of the mm-hmm. ChatGPT and, and realized one thing is, so now I'm. I don't know. Have you uh, have you used the Chat GPT uh, or all not? the time? All so the time. Have you noticed that there companion. is a market now with the different Chat GPTs? So uh-huh. there is applications based on the Chat GPT technology, but mm-hmm. it's it's specific to certain fields. Mm-hmm. So you there is a video editing, there is a writing, mm-hmm. there is a financial advisory, then something that uh, help you to create a let's say logo, mm-hmm. something. Uh, some of the GPT uh, Chat GPTs help you to create a presentation, for example. And one of the common things that you need to, what I have realized that I don't know how to give the proper prompt. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Maybe I have in my head some kind uh-huh. of ideas, but mm-hmm. I realize that I can really express mm-hmm. it explicitly mm-hmm. and explain to the chat GPT what mm-hmm. I really wanted. Mm-hmm. So probably one of the uh, skills that will be necessary in the future, taking into account that the chat GPT will become a part of our life is ability to express yourself, mm-hmm. as express your thoughts, express mm-hmm. your opinions, these kind mm-hmm. of things. Because without that, mm-hmm. you will be in trouble. So for that, I would suggest to read more books, to mm-hmm. speak with the law, uh, other people and mm-hmm. like build up the your conversational skills. Mm-hmm. It's going to be way, way, I mean, crucial in the future, mm-hmm. I believe. Because that's the one of the things. Because if you listen to the, some of the specialists from the IT field, they say that the uh, software engineers will be gone. Mm-hmm. There will be no. Uh, there won't be any necessity for them in the future because ChatGPT basically can write the, write the, any software you want. But who you need it is actually the person who can explain to the chat GPT what really needs to be done. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really challenging, to be honest. Uh, yeah. That's the things that, that that crossed my mind recently anyway. Yeah, yeah, there's something for sure to bear in mind because yeah. uh, first time I got introduced to ChatGPT, I had no idea what I was looking at, but then I eventually figured it out. I have no hard time using ChatGPT because like you said, I, 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 I'd like to think I'm very expressive. I'd like to think that I have uh, a good lexical you know, resource yeah. to be able to put out there or put... Tra- tell ChatGPT what I want and yeah. it gives me answer instantly. But at the same time, I've come, come to see the lot, a lot of people, a lot of students I teach who simply don't know how to use this application. And, and, and now they're actually uh, on Twitter, especially yeah. like now known as X. Yeah. There are a lot of tweets and handles where people are sharing ready prompts. Yeah. Yeah, you can just copy and paste yeah. and you'll get instant answers and they're making money out of it. Yeah, this is yeah. exactly what I'm tell- telling you. It's when they when the people say mm-hmm. about the technology, some of them, they're afraid that they're going to lose their jobs and uh, mm-hmm. technology or robots mm-hmm. or this kind of technology will take away the uh, the jobs they they doing it. It's not like that. Mm-hmm. It's going to be, a, the, there will be transition. Mm-hmm. So the the way how you doing certain things mm-hmm. will change basically. Yeah. There will be creation of the new jobs mm-hmm. related to the new technology. So the only mm-hmm. thing that you need to do is you need to learn constantly mm-hmm. and adapt to the reality. That right. that's the what you need right. basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and there's no point. There is no really point delaying it or avoiding it. No, because a lot of people are skeptical about ChatGPT. And 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 one of those people I know is Alicia. He's always <laughs> telling me it's not credible. It's checking is inaccurate. But here's what I tell him: it's 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 here to stay. ChatGPT is not going away anytime no. soon, no. right? And it's speed and and the range and and, and database and all. it's got 
it's, it's got a lot of superpowers and you can't as a human simply beat it as a yeah. teacher, right? I, I personally trust ChatGPT more than an, a certified IELTS examiner. Yeah. Well, so, l- let's say, let's put it that is, way. As, as much, uh, well, one of the difference of the ChatGPT so far I know is it's learning constantly. Mm-hmm. It's not like something that you just installed and mm-hmm. told to do that. It's mm-hmm. improving all the time as, as much. So after the years, as, mm-hmm. as, as much as they will be get more information about that, they mm-hmm. will be much, uh, they will be more accurate mm-hmm. and they can produce more information mm-hmm. uh, than what they do right now. And their yeah. capability is, let's say, limitless if right. you think about it. Yes, 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 it is. Yeah. And here's something else. I always tell people who are skeptical about technology and and who who's who, who are afraid that it's going to take away their jobs yeah uh, i i got this quote i remember from a movie but i remember what movie it is but it's dope it's super dope and it goes if you can't beat it join it yeah <laughs> true <laughs> if true. you can't beat it join it yeah so uh, it's not a point of uh, going against it uh-huh. that, as i said mm-hmm. you just need to start mm-hmm. being the game all the mm-hmm. time it's not like that before. For I'm sure that uh, we used to have a, like our parents used to have an idea that mm-hmm. uh, you finish your school, you go to the university, you get to some degree, then you gain the experience, then you work in that company or in the in the, that plant or something like that. You gradually. Uh, change your position and become kind of manager or something like that. But it was so like, it was so all written step by step. Mm-hmm. And it was like a, uh, easy to, mm-hmm. you just have to pol- follow the, mm-hmm. the path. Mm-hmm. But now it's not like that. Yeah. The, you, it's, you mm-hmm. will realize that when we, when you reach this age mm-hmm. 30, 35, even 40, you will realize that you can learn, you have to learn something new mm-hmm. <laughs> in order to be able to keep up with the, uh, with the, with the real life, to be mm-hmm. honest. So lots of, a lot of things change. So think about it, guys, that uh, mm-hmm. uh, more focus on your skills rather than the knowledge. Because with all development of these technologies, uh, all you need to do is be able to find the information, analyze it, and make a decision or based on that information, basically. Because let's say, uh, I don't need any more to remember when the Amor Timur was born mm-hmm. or when the certain events happen. I mm-hmm. can just ask the chat GPT or Google and I'm gonna get the instant reply. But what will be more important is to find out what's the reason behind these events, what kind of lessons we should learn from these events, and what kind of mistake we should avoid. So that will be the, it was always important, but mm-hmm. uh, as now it's even more mm-hmm. obvious than it used to be, to be honest. Yeah, like so. developing critical thinking skills yeah. and crea- yeah. being creative. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, the future is exciting. And it's scary, but at the same time exciting. There is a lot to be excited for. Now, uh, you made the point that you did your bachelor's in the UK, right? Yeah. It's not the bachelor's. It's more like a professional qualification. Uh Uh, It's not the bachelor's. So that wasn't your bachelor's? No, my bachelor's Mm -hmm. is accounting and finance, basically. But I didn't do bachelor's. So you went to a local university here? Yes, I went to the local university. Actually, uh, when I was in UK, Mm -hmm. uh, I had made a decision uh, whether I want to pursue the uh, formal degree Mm -hmm. at the UK or not. The thing is... If I want to pursue the formal degree at the un, uh, at the UK, I should had I had to stay longer than I expected mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, there was a certain thing that I couldn't afford myself, so I, ha- I decided that will be the best option just to finish the, this uh-huh. professional qualification and come back to Uzbekistan. Uh, that, that's actually what I was going to ask you. Yeah. So, what was your experience like studying in the UK? Right. What, what is this place like? I would uh, advise to everyone mm-hmm. who is listening to us, mm-hmm. I tell to my uh, uh, friends, my mm-hmm. nephews, <laughs> niece, even to my colleagues at the, <laughs> at the education, I mean at the education, that if you have a chance, go and experience studying and living in other countries. Not only in UK. If you have a chance to go to UK, I like UK, go to UK. But if you have any chance just to go to any other countries, do it. Mm-hmm. 
Why? Because it's going to change the way you look at the certain things in your life. Uh, for me, one of the biggest challenges, one of the biggest surprise, I wouldn't say surprise, I knew about it uh, before, but seeing it and experience was completely different. You see, one of the difference, we, uh, one of the difference between educational, uh, education system of Uzbekistan and education system of the Western countries, mm -hmm. including the UK, is here we focus more on the as I said, on the knowledge, mm -hmm. as we know. So, and we focus about observing the materials all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, and the, one of the part of that uh, process is learning by heart. Mm -hmm. So many, our let's say, our education process includes learning by heart. Mm -hmm. And you always have a control and pressure by teachers, by the organization that you need to learn, you need to study, you need to come and attend the school, you need to have a certain uniform to wear, you need to look certain way. So it's kind of like a, you have a, all the time mm -hmm. pressure from the institutions as well, mm -hmm. itself that they're trying to, to create, the, shape you in the way they want to see you. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the UK or in the Western countries, I realize that the, you become a more independent person than you used to be. So mm -hmm. you have to take care of every, your education on your own. They say like, uh, if you want to study, you're studying for your own sake. So don't expect the teachers or someone else go after you and make you teach it, to learn or study something else. This is the materials. This is the way how it has to be learned. They're going to show you. They're going to teach you. But other than that, they will say, go to the library. Mm -hmm. Go to the internet. It's up to you how much mm -hmm. time are you going to spend on your own to study these materials. But at the end of the let's like, semester, you, there is exam. And you have to pass the test, otherwise you fail. That's it. And they don't. I wouldn't say they don't care. They mm -hmm. care about it, but to the extent to which you care about mm -hmm. it. If you don't want to study, don't want. To, nobody is going to force you. So, uh, what you learn when you go to UK, it's about more like a self-study mm -hmm. skill. When you start managing your own time, when you focus about the, where to find the correct answers, mm -hmm. where to find the certain information, which materials to use, you start learning how to process the materials and bring something else. So for me, it was something that was quite interesting to experience. Even right. the exams, to be honest, I remember that here is like, uh, we're talking about too much control to be even in IELTS to be honest you already know that they, they check you mm -hmm. uh, they make sure that you don't have a phone phones you don't have a belongings and everything I mean literally it's like all about the control whereas there they just tells you that this is a rule so you are not allowed to have a cell phone with you that's it if they're gonna catch you that's the end of the story they're just gonna ask you to leave and there is no nothing to no warnings yeah no, no warnings, warnings. Uh, it's your yeah. fault so it's up to you whether to take that risk or not so when I came to uh, the place to where to take the test it was kind of a feeling of freedom mm -hmm. uh, they are just asking me and saying like this is I showed them this is my phone and said put it under your table mm -hmm. and leave it and don't touch it mm -hmm. and you're fine mm -hmm. so it was it was good I mean kind mm -hmm. of uh, you experience the different feelings. Like, as I said, uh, they have to say correctly, they actually transfer the responsibility mm -hmm. for your own action mm -hmm. to yourself, basically. Whereas here, you feel that the responsibility is still at the at the university or at the teachers at the institution mm -hmm. where you're studying, which is not right, to be honest, yeah. in my opinion, anyway. So they allow room for self-discovery and exploration and more self-accountability. Yes, that, that's right. the, as I said, they will focus on mainly make you independent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, self-studying mm -hmm. uh, well person who mm -hmm. actually uh, so as I said they trying to give you the skills that will be mm -hmm. uh, required or need mm -hmm. you, you need it in the future to be right, honest right. So that, that's the something that mm -hmm. I learned whereas here the the idea sometimes I feel that they just want you create mm -hmm. some kind of worker mm -hmm. who just do the, exactly what he has been told well, to yeah, do. Yeah, like a cog in the machine. Yeah. Cog in the machine, yeah. right? Yeah. 
kind of things. So anyway, uh, I will certainly advise mm. the people to go to abroad, to study mm. abroad, to meet with other people, mm -hmm. because you learn that, that there is a different uh, angles, um, different approach to solve the certain issues. Mm -hmm. Even, I mean, uh, even in your life, you will learn that uh, uh, it's not one-sided, mm -hmm. that you can actually approach the issue from the different angles. Right. And that's the one of the things that will help you out in the future. Yeah, and lot. don't you think, don't you think things are sort of starting to change here now uh, with all the uh, uh, with the privatization of education and more and more foreign universities coming in and setting up their branches yeah right with this new accreditation system so well certainly changing well certainly it's about the change and mm -hmm. it already changes already happening mm -hmm. but i would say it's out uh, this all change is happening out of necessity mm -hmm. It's not like uh, our, uh, you know that the why there are so many private university has mm -hmm. emerged recently in Uzbekistan because uh, the government, I believe, wants to educate as much as possible student, mm -hmm. as much as possible people. But unfortunately, their mm -hmm. resources and funds are limited. They can't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. So basically, I remember the statistic. I think it was like a. Uh, 10 to 1 mm -hmm. on average mm -hmm. which means that for every uh, position for every student for every admission place there is a 10 candidates mm -hmm. and they will admit just one mm -hmm. which is uh, quite let's say not well, good statistics yeah, to be honest not, not a good number now with the help of the private universities this number gone up mm -hmm. to I think uh, so it means it was like a, a admission was 10% now mm -hmm. admission is about 28 about around 30 percent mm -hmm. which have give the opportunity to many students to get higher education of course there is a question about the quality of this education i'm not talking about that it's mm -hmm. gonna take time but the development is happening and it's happening and change is happening for good and we need to keep up and help this change to be uh, let's say successful if we really want to make the difference if we want to if we really want to do something I mean successful I mean if we want to develop as a society itself as a Uzbekistan citizen as a country mm -hmm. so that's something positive I can see that without taking into account that there is a, some like there is still something that needs to be improved anyway. right right and do you see any you know on the other side of the coin I feel like with all these universities coming in here, they're bringing with them their foreign influence, their ideologies, and their culture, yes. some of which may not be readily welcomed in Uzbekistan here. Well, so how do you feel about that? Uh, I'll tell you something. Or is it something that's natural? Well, first of all, remember of now we're living in the in the in the reality. Mm. I mean, living in the era when the globalization is happening. Uh -huh. So you can see that the countries mm -hmm. in order to survive they have to interact with each other mm -hmm. so interaction with the in each other in economical sphere means mm -hmm. interaction in the cultural sphere as well mm -hmm. field as well mm -hmm. you know education in every aspect so it's E inevitable. What's the word in English? I forgot. The uh, inevitable. Inevitable. In in inevitable. Inevitable. Sorry for my English. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I actually have trouble saying the word myself too. Inevitable. So anyway. Yeah. So it's a inevit inevitable. Sorry. Yes. Anyway. So so what we need to focus about it mm -hmm. is to build up the our and our cultural values. Mm -hmm. And I believe we have a school. Mm -hmm. I believe that will actually can. Mm -hmm. um, help us in this situation. Yeah. So basically what we need to focus, I mean, for the last 25 years, I can say during, after the gaining independence, mm -hmm. uh, one of the positive things that I can think about it is actually we were, as a country, as a nation, we were able to identify ourselves as Uzbeks. Mm -hmm. We were able to revive our history. Mm -hmm. We were able to uh uh, make the, our create our own values, mm -hmm. which uh, the other things has been built on. Mm -hmm. So now, 
I believe for the last five, six years, we start, we become a more open to the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. And now I can see that there is lots of value. Mm-hmm. As you said, there is lots of information, cultural, mm-hmm. other aspects is coming to our country. But I guess we at this stage, we're able to fight back or at least Mm-hmm. to stand on our own values. But, but the clash will happen anyway. Anyway, right. Yeah, right. it's going to happen anyway. With internet, with mm-hmm. the technology we're talking about, it, you can't avoid that. That's not, that, that's not actually the reason why I brought this yeah. up. The reason why I brought up this aspect of foreign universities coming in and setting up shop here is uh, not long ago, I saw on one of the university's websites, the admission yeah. website, uh, there's there are a bunch of questions that are confusing. Like, and one example is they ask you your gender. And if you click on it, there are five different genders. I see. Right. I see. Yeah. And I see uh, there is a problem. Yeah. It is a problem. problem, Right. It is a problem. It is a problem. Well, as I said, probably we need to focus on our own values. And Uh actually when this kind of new Mm -hmm. information comes, Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to make an adjustment or uh-huh. request the adjustment mm-hmm. based on the, our core values, basically, as I said. So then, as I said, it's a fight. Mm-hmm. You have to accept that that now is a, there is a clash of the cultures, clash mm-hmm. of the ideas is happening now, and it's a fight. And it's not, as I said, uh-huh. it's, a, it's a reality, and right. you have to accept this challenge and work on it. Mm-hmm. And the only way to do that is working on your own values and mm-hmm. on your ideas. That, that's the only thing. Uh, let me ask this question yeah. real quick. If IDP Australia ever asked you to change the website to ask the applicants yeah. to ch- choose their gender and there are yeah. five options, would yeah. you accept it? It's going to be a challenge. Probably we're going to oppose that. Uh-huh. Because let's say being in Uzbekistan, knowing that uh, there is mm. a certain limitation about certain things and that it's not going to be accepted by the society, mm-hmm. then we get definitely we're going to raise this question saying mm-hmm. like, guys, this is not acceptable in this society. Mm-hmm. This is not acceptable in this field. So we're definitely going to raise mm-hmm. this question and say like, uh, well, I would rather not mm-hmm. to do that in this market mm-hmm. if you want to stay in this market, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they will have to think about it, whether they really want to, what's more important for them, implementing mm-hmm. these changes or stay in the market, mm-hmm. let's say. So we will definitely, based on our own core values, we're going to have a op- at least options to fight, mm-hmm. as I said, yeah. and oppose these kind of changes, yeah. kind of things. How it's going to end? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I, 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 have a, I actually have a prediction. I think these corporations are going to grow so big and, and have s- deep pockets and have so much money to the point where they don't care about money anymore. Maybe. It's, maybe. it's going to be all about proving someone wrong. It's about uh, forcing your ideology, your principles on other people, making them uh, you know, accept Accept them. Yes. So they're not. They're not going to be interested in keeping market share anymore. Ah, right? as I said, I'm not sure. So as as a person, uh-huh. uh, as the head of the company, I would believe, and uh, we're going to oppose that. We're mm-hmm. going to fight that. And to yeah. which extent it's going to go, um, I can't predict it. But yeah. probably we. I can say myself that. Uh, let's say. There is cert- when we set up the company, literally. Uh, we have our core values, which we try to follow all the time. And we said, when I say core values, it's the red lines that Mm -hmm. we shouldn't cross at all. Otherwise, if we're going to cross that lines, we're not going to be the same company or at least what we have decided that we just rather to close down this company and do something else, to be honest. So I hope we're not going to go to that extent Mm -hmm. in certain points. Uh, I hope we will be strong enough mm-hmm. to able to as i said to oppose the certain thing that we don't yeah. like it that's yes. that's the reality i'm not saying it's going to be easy it's going to be mm-hmm. difficult actually the things that you're talking about it's already happening mm-hmm. it's not about the changing the application or something like that mm-hmm. it's generally the idea about mm-hmm. this kind of new things it's already been trying to implement it in oh, the society. Really? So what, 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 it's not about IDP. I'm just generally saying like, uh-huh. as I said, if the foreign companies has got their own agenda, probably mm-hmm. they're moving. Uh, some of them has been happening indirectly. Mm-hmm. The, the, what the youth telling me, it's direct approach. Mm-hmm. But the 
there is a different way to change the society's mind and approach the kind of, I mean the this problem basically so what are some instances you personally came across where yeah. they're trying to brainwash our people uh, into accepting those ideologies I, have, do, do you I know can't say anything examples? about the IDP because I haven't oh. noticed anything about it in this field to be mm -hmm. honest uh, uh, when it comes to IDP I can see that they are very cultural sensitive mm -hmm. they take into account the the country's uh, uh, let's say limitation on mm -hmm. certain subjects I'll give you an example for that mm -hmm. so uh, for example in Saudi Arabia in Middle East the test is taken se women take the test separately from the men Mm -hmm. wow. so they, they kind of they look into this and say like mm -hmm. yes this is not accepted by the society then we have to come up with some kind of solution they come mm -hmm. up with some kind of solution I'll tell you for even uh, if I'm going to extend this subject uh, there is, so on the woman's test uh, there is no man at all mm -hmm. even the invigilators and mm -hmm. the people who is actually controlling this it's mm -hmm. a woman actually so this kind of thing so I uh, so if we're gonna evaluate this uh, uh, topic, we're talking about more about the media. We're talking mm -hmm. about more about the inter Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, and as you mentioned, like a Twitter and X, for example. So uh, I guess at the moment, our country, I mean, everyone see that this is a uh, red line in our society at the mm -hmm. moment. And I guess nobody is daring at this stage mm -hmm. crossing this line directly. Mm -hmm. But I can see that the indirectly there is a certain thing happening. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. Because yeah. I have a feeling like in maybe like 50 or 60 years from now, if not 100, yeah. our grand grandkids are going to look back and study this particular period in history uh, as a time when big cultural change happened. Probably, right? yes. Or the yes. start of that change. Okay. Well, I'm a little bit pessimistic about this kind of thing. So I imagine that after 50, uh, 50 years, uh -huh. it, the things will be way, way different than it is now, uh -huh. honestly. Sometimes I have a feeling even we're going to have a great war for the humanity itself. Oh, yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe I'm wrong and I hope I'm wrong, uh -huh. to be honest, but you never know. Sure. Anyway, that's the some topic that uh, needs the separate discussion. Let's uh -huh. put it that way. Anyway. <laughs> sure. At the moment, I can say that um, IELTS and, uh, and the educational organization with which whom we are making partnership working are very tolerant uh, to many things mm -hmm. in a good way and very sensitive to the cultural aspects of the country where they are operating and they are working. Uh, so I believe mm -hmm. uh, at this moment, I don't mm -hmm. see any problem with that. Even if something happens, rest assured, guys, we got a warrior here who's going to stand up for us. Okay, Not <laughs> only me, there are plenty of them. <laughs> plenty of warriors yeah, is going to yeah. stand up for us and yes. our values. So don't yeah. worry about that. All right. So moving on, what do you say we now talk a little about your, you know, circle back to your career. Yep. Yeah, you talked about all these different jobs yeah. uh, and fields you were involved in. So you said you were in insurance business, yeah. you, you were a manager. Production, production, consultancy, yeah. yeah, different fields. Of all these jobs you had in the past, yeah. which one of them was your most favorite? Yeah. And and you have to be honest here, okay? I don't want you to say okay. I, I working at with Eddie Action just because they're gonna watch <laughs> <I you. see. laughs> Well, obviously Eddie Action is one of my favorite. Why? Because uh -huh. this is something uh, mm -hmm. we created, uh -huh. but um, if you were this is all happened. This is this is all happened because of my past experience. Uh -huh. If I didn't have those experiences, mm -hmm. if I didn't work for that mm -hmm. company, probably I wouldn't able to mm -hmm. to create, or uh, I wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to create this kind mm -hmm. of environment. What we're talking about, edu action, mm -hmm. literally. So, so if you could refer back to one chapter, I'll or tell period you. I'll tell career. you. Uh, all of them has got, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, left. Mm -hmm. I gained and learned from every one of them. Mm -hmm. But I would say most, not favorable one, mm -hmm. but the most important one, which I remember most, I would say my first official work is in the insurance company. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Because I was a student. Mm -hmm. So I started that work when I was on the third grade. Mm -hmm. So I started as a part-time intern, then mm -hmm. I gradually able to go to the up to the managerial position anyway. So, but why I remember that is because uh, that 
I gained and learned a lot working for that company. First of all, because of the size of that company. So for the people, for the young generation, when they ask me what I have to do after the graduation of the university or uh, uh, what kind of path I have to choose, one of the advice I give them is if you have an ability to go abroad and study abroad, this is great. But if you're talking about the experience, I would suggest to anyone go and work for the big companies mm -hmm. to get the taste of the corporate life. Yeah. What is like to work for the organization where is 400, 500, 600, 1000 people are working. Why? Because there is a procedures in place. Mm -hmm. There is a, you can see the organizational structure. You can see the how the companies operates basically and it's a hell of a lot of experience for you to be honest. Like for example uh let's uh as i can give i can give you example like now at the company like if we have to write some kind of official letters mm -hmm. request to the government organization usually they come to me and ask me to write it why mm -hmm. because i have a more experience of doing that because when i was working for the insurance company it was a though uh, it was a governmental insurance company basically mm -hmm. and most of my time was mm -hmm. writing and sitting and mm -hmm. writing the reports, letters, mm -hmm. requests, and all that kind of stuff. So I was quite good on writing this kind of report, uh, even understanding what the people is, uh, what they are reading this information, what they understanding from the what I've written. And so it give. I mean, it was an ability that I've valued a lot. So mm -hmm. since then, if something official needs to be written, I do that. It's mm -hmm. one of the good examples I can say about it. But uh, also what I learned that I learned how to have to read the uh, rules and regulation as well for me. It was quite interesting because most of our work was regulated by the law. Mm -hmm. And I learned that how important they are and where to find the correct information, uh, where to read and see the certain lines where you can cross, where you can't cross, mm -hmm. uh, where you can just bypass it or something like that. So mm -hmm. it was a good experience. So for anyone who wants to have a, let's say, uh, to become a successful, I believe, go and work even for free. Yeah, it's not about money. It's about the experience, even for free, and work and experience the corporate life. Mm -hmm. If it's gonna be foreign companies, it's even good. If mm -hmm. not, go to the local companies, but try to find the biggest one as possible. When I was went to that company, actually, it was second largest in terms of size, mm -hmm. as far as I remember, and the third largest in terms of revenue, mm -hmm. for example. So it was quite a good experience. No, so. Yes. And probably also you come in contact with uh, people from different backgrounds, right? Definitely. That's that's for sure because you start learning how to communicate with the people, uh -huh. uh, how to, uh, let's say, how to present the information. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a lot of skills, I mean, mm -hmm. which you will benefit in the future. Mm -hmm. And also you have to take into account that uh, it's like a family. Mm -hmm. I always refer to the even to our company for education as mm -hmm. a family. Look at that, um, to and that family can be big or can be small, and based on that, your experience can be huge mm -hmm. or let's say different from the one and another. So, b being able to work another company, it's a huge of a experience, able to f see the people, to understand the people, mm -hmm. and be able to work with them and interact with them, which is mm -hmm. very, very important because you can't speak at the same level with your co-worker mm -hmm. and uh, with the general director of the company, mm -hmm. or you can't speak with at the same level with the uh, let's say uh, mm -hmm. with the head of the departments or yeah. other companies, so it is experience. It's a good experience. Yeah, there's like a clear hierarchical order. Definitely, that yeah. you need to understand. Yeah, this is. I know that the yeah. young generation they don't like uh -huh. talking about the hierarchy. They uh -huh. don't like authorities. Yeah, but that's the life mm -hmm. that you have to accept. That uh, mm -hmm. yeah, well, as as you said, you need to. Uh, you can fight mm -hmm. or you have to join. Mm -hmm. And I guess mm -hmm. uh, before you make any decision, you need to learn about it uh -huh. and then make a decision based on that. So having experience mm -hmm. is something that will make you understand mm -hmm. who you are and what you're capable mm -hmm. of. Definitely. So uh, when I said that when we established the company, uh, everyone asked you why you do certain things differently. And mm -hmm. I said, based on our 
past experience. Mm-hmm. So I saw the certain things which I liked it and I saw the certain things that I don't like it. Mm-hmm. So now I'm trying to implement the, what was good mm-hmm. and I learn from the things that I didn't like and I just want to avoid it and mm-hmm. I'm trying to do it differently. That, mm-hmm. That's that's the who we are. And now, I mean, basically I'm, I hope it's working now. I hope mm-hmm. that my employees and the people whom I'm we're working mm-hmm. with are happy with us. I hope so, at least. Yeah, yeah. So clearly, your first job was a transformative and definitely and foundational Actually, learning experience. Actually, my first job uh, make me to make one of the most important decision in my life, mm-hmm, which is? I decided to myself, I'm not gonna work for the government ever again. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the end of the story. That was yeah. the end of my experience with the government, to be honest. Uh, so, what was the real turn off for you? Ah, uh, with, with 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 bureaucracy there's many job. things many things mm-hmm. uh unfortunately in mm-hmm. the uh, in this kind of uh in the governmental organization uh mm-hmm. there is no individuality yeah they're not giving you opportunity to grow as mm-hmm. a uh, as a person to be honest mm-hmm. one of the things i noticed anyway maybe i'm wrong but that, at least this is my experience not, anyway. not really i think with government jobs there's this inherent feature of Bureauc- bureaucracy, bureaucracy yeah. which is which is which is completely normal so it's all uh, so it's all run by the authority to be mm-hmm. honest and i don't like the authorities as well mm-hmm. to be honest this is what i found for myself anyway so i decided that i'm going to work for the private companies mm-hmm. when you can do something differently. Mm-hmm. So for me, one of the crucial decisions I made was like, I'm not gonna work for the government mm-hmm. organization ever again. Mm-hmm. So, so you, see, you, you have to experience that yeah. to make a decision yeah. anyway. So when signing up for a governmental job, it's it's a trade-off between uh, your freedom and your job security. Yes. So you're gonna have a secure job for the rest of your life, be taken care of by well, yes, the kind government. Of, kind of. By s- sort of a business which never fails. No. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To right. certain extent, it's right. Yeah, but, but in exchange, you have to give up your freedom. Yes. So, and, to and exchange, you need to give up your individuality uh-huh. if mm-hmm. it's gonna be correct pronunciation. It, Sorry for my pronunciation, it's anyway, okay. guys. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. So I always wanted the freedom. Uh-huh. Uh, kind of feeling that mm-hmm. I can do something differently. So mm-hmm. that's why I said, nah, that's not for me. Yeah. So I certainly saw, mm-hmm. saw the certain things that I mm-hmm. don't like it and I still don't like them and mm-hmm. I don't want to be part of that anymore. <laughs> that, that's the end of the yeah. story, that's it. So it really comes down to, to your personality. If you're someone who wants to be their own boss, then you better go out there and have your own thing. Like it's build, build not only about thing. being the own boss. So yeah. we'll not, we might come to the point of to our previous discussion. Mm-hmm. So there is a certain values you have mm-hmm. and certain principles. And the question is, mm-hmm. uh, so there was a stage when I had to decide that should I give up my principles and mm-hmm. certain my values mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. work for the organization which mm-hmm. I, let's say, have a don't really agree mm-hmm. with them mm-hmm. or stick to my position mm-hmm. stick to my principle stick to my ideas which i have and just mm-hmm. carry on different paths and i mm-hmm. decided okay so this is the line mm-hmm. where i cannot cross and mm-hmm. just decided to go other way around yeah. that's it so same as going back to your question there will be the certain point to which you're gonna fight mm-hmm. then if you decide that this is the end mm-hmm. then you will just have to choose whether mm-hmm. you're joining Mm-hmm. or just choosing the different path. So mm-hmm. I decided I'm going to go in a different direction. Mm-hmm. I never regret that of my mm-hmm. that decision, to be honest. I'm going to tell you guys, I never regret it. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely sure that I wouldn't, mm-hmm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't last long in the government, to mm-hmm. be honest. Yeah, yeah, but but somebody should be doing that job, right? We, we need someone to definitely. Uh, yeah, well, it all comes people. down to the personality, as you said. Some of the people will dis, uh, mm-hmm. will choose security mm-hmm. over the risk. Mm-hmm. So if you have a look for the my resume for mm-hmm. my CV, you can see that I have worked for the so many companies, ten different companies, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and different fields. In yeah. uh, I have a friend who has been working for the same company for the twenty years now, mm-hmm. for fifteen years now. And what do they tell you? Well, it all comes down to the point uh-huh. about the stability, about mm-hmm. the security. And when they ask me why you choo- why you change your job all mm-hmm. the time, why are you not afraid of, mm-hmm. uh, let's say, 
losing or mm. are you not afraid that you're going to fail? And I said, because I have done it so many times. I don't. Mm-hmm. I just want to change. I mm-hmm. want something differently, All the, mm-hmm. experience something differently all the time. Mm-hmm. That's the what I like. And that's why I'm not afraid of changing. If I'm going to fail, I'm going to change another field. I'm going to mm-hmm. go to another thing and mm-hmm. I'm going to do my best to try on that. So mm-hmm. for me, being mm-hmm. in one place is more like a torture than... Mm-hmm. Rather, I would rather choose to give up and do mm-hmm. something differently. So it's mm-hmm. actually I'm surprised that I'm working for the Eduaction that long. <laughs> it has never been any other con- company which I work so long. To be uh, honest, uh, you ever thought of quitting you, this job? Well, no, I don't think uh, so. Uh, I, no, I, at the moment. Honest, what? Honest. You, no, you got to be honest though here. Uh, no, you know why? No, uh, let's even, say, let's say, I, I had ideas. I, no, I, I wanted to quit this job to be honest. But as I said, just because we have a different projects, uh-huh. that's helped me to carry mm-hmm. on and mm-hmm. do. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. to continue to work this company to be to, oh, for see. this company. So if you ask me now, I'm mm-hmm. not really involved in the IELTS itself. So mm-hmm. I have a different projects. I have mm-hmm. a different things to accomplish mm-hmm. and to do. So there was a constant change the constant development mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. this company mm-hmm. that actually helped me to stay in this company mm-hmm. and still helping me to continue to work in this mm-hmm. company this is really what i wanted i want a constant development constant mm-hmm. change that's what i needed basically and that's what we two have in common right you know i earlier today i was telling you i'm fed up with ielts and you're like don't say that please <laughs> but I, I I am, and that's the reason why I started this podcast. Yeah. And truth be told, I'm actually getting kind of fed up with this podcast. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so and, quick. And, and, and then I was yeah, and I was thinking about maybe time to start making different kind of content. How about I get into cooking? How yeah. about how about we go around this town, start shooting uh, travel vlogs for people who are coming yeah. here and wanting to know about the city. Yeah. But. No, don't don't, have any don't, sources. don't quit. Yeah. Especially in the field of education, it's mm-hmm. really important to have a uh, people who has a ability to share uh, the knowledge. Uh-huh. So you don't you shouldn't really quit that. I, I, I can consider myself a lifelong learner slash teacher. I, I'm going to be involved in education my entire life for sure. Yeah. But uh, I at the same time I there, I never sh- you know shut other doors. Yeah. I never say no to those doors. They're yeah. always open. And what I tell myself, even if this school is gonna fail, I just go and do something else. Like, yeah. and that makes you have actually a very dangerous p- player. The Probably. fact that you're not afraid to take risks, the fact that you are not afraid of losing. Well, because th- you can, you can just I'll start tell over you something. It's actually created the, some of the tension and the problems in my career uh-huh. as well. Because okay. let's put let's put it that way. There was a certain periods and the certain people who Mm -hmm. used to try to threaten me as well Uh and i was never afraid of losing the job and Uh i was like you i'm gonna fire you (laughs) so what (laughs) okay when so i mean having confidence Uh that's something that will make you uh let's say uh, able to stand Mm -hmm. to what you believe Mm -hmm. and understand yourself i mean be yourself to ba- mm-hmm. basically so so not to don't be afraid to change anything yeah. just try it once and you will you will see that how easy it is but, to keep changing the certain things how make the things much interesting but at the same time don't be too rebellious okay? no, 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 no 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 it's not, not like not that. too rebellious i hope our teaching staff is not watching this podcast <laughs> okay no you know when i say about it it comes with the uh, uh, so we're talking about a lot of freedom, let's say, mm-hmm. as uh, I was mentioning this word a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Freedom comes with the responsibility. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's yeah. not something that you just take it as granted. That's something you just take it and enjoy it. No, mm-hmm. the freedom comes with the responsibility. The only difference is you just make your own decision mm-hmm. that's the one of the important things but when you make a decision don't forget about it, that the real relationship built with other people don't forget about the people who's surrounding you don't mm-hmm. forget about the people who's helping out you to become who you are mm-hmm. basically don't forget about your parents your brothers your f- uh, friends because this is the w- most important at the end of the life believe me what will be left is your relationship mm-hmm. that's going to be have i mean let's uh, let's say it's gonna have uh, any sense Mm -hmm. uh in your life Mm -hmm. so 
don't shut the door and don't take the risk mm -hmm. recklessly. Mm -hmm. Think about it, positive mm -hmm. and negative aspects of every of your decision. And I would advise you to think about the people around you mm -hmm. who are surrounding you, especially the ones who help you mm -hmm. to grow. Mm -hmm. So that that's the thing. So I'm yeah. not talking about being like a, <laughs> uh, as yeah. I said, being reckless about making decisions. Yeah, because because some people are, because some people watching this podcast are probably gonna take what we're saying literally, and you know maybe just drop out of school, no, no, right? no, no drop no, out of uh, university, and thinking that they're gonna be super successful because yeah. of all those dropout stories they they see on YouTube, like Mark Zuckerberg, Elon yeah, Musk, yeah. and Bill Gates who dropped no, out of university. Though, I would say if we're gonna if we're gonna discuss this conversation, mm -hmm. I mean uh, this topic, I would say those stories are more like an exception than mm -hmm. rather than the rule. Mm -hmm. So of course, if you have got the exceptional family. Mm -hmm ties, exceptional mm -hmm. networks, exceptional wealth, mm -hmm. exceptional knowledge, let's mm -hmm. say, and the qualification, of course you can choose that path. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, how many of us is like that? Not many. Not many. Not many. So only way, as I can see, that the mm -hmm. human being as a person can develop is about the gaining the knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's it. So the formal education is very important. Mm -hmm. Formal education, it's not about just the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you go to the university, you learn the skills. Mm -hmm. You ju not just to learn mm -hmm. the accounting, you mm -hmm. not just learn the finance, you learn the skill, have to find the information. Mm -hmm. You learn the skills, how to write the reports. You mm -hmm. learn the skills, how to communicate with the people. Mm -hmm. You learn the skills, actually you learn have to learn mm -hmm. basically so this is was one of the important things mm -hmm. so don't think about it like uh, if mm -hmm. you exception okay if you're not mm -hmm. that's the something uh, that you need to think about it and when it comes to this uh, as you said as you mentioned about uh, not the success uh, we're talking about the luck let's mm -hmm. say uh, it's another topic and it's another big topic the success and the luck comes to the person who is ready, who's prepared for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come out out of air. It mm -hmm. doesn't come out like out of nothing. Mm -hmm. When you learn, when you strive, when you do something differently, then the success comes. Then the luck is coming. Mm -hmm. It's not that something that appears all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. So let's let's put it that way. I mean, as I said, it's a different topic. It's a huge topic. Uh, Let's say if you don't have a certain quality, mm -hmm. certain knowledge, and everything, how do you know that the the opportunity in front of you mm -hmm. will make you successful? Mm -hmm. Let's say you learn English so well, mm -hmm. you work on on your skills, you pass the test IELTS, so you work hard, and then uh, now you're mm -hmm. running your own education center. Now you have a podcast, you have a team, you have uh, people around you. Uh, let's say, if you haven't learned English, if you haven't studied mm -hmm. IELTS, I mean, take the IELTS, maybe you would have missed this opportunity to open this education center. If you haven't seen your uh, mentors and the mm -hmm. people, you haven't spoken with them, how would you know to mm -hmm. take this opportunity? Yeah. So think about it. So the the success and luck comes for the only for the prepared people. Yeah. So I can put it that way. So yeah, before you start taking any big risks, you have to build like a firm ground, firm foundation of knowledge and skill and network. Yeah. All right. And then you can, you know, take some chances, take some risks. Yep. Right. Yeah. Anything you do outside that is just is not is incalculated risk. It's it's reckless. Like yes, say, say definitely. It. All right. Now, oh, can we talk a little more about edu, edu action team? Yes. Right. So, uh, I was going to ask you backstory about founding it. So you were one of the co-founders of edu, edu action, right? Well, to be more accurate, actually, mm -hmm. the founder of the edu action is Umi John itself. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I was more like a joining his team mm -hmm. at the beginning, anyway. But when it comes to the project of the IELTS mm -hmm. and working with IDP, yes, mm -hmm. uh, the, from the beginning, I was mm -hmm. like Umi John has an idea. He worked very hard mm -hmm. to bring this idea into the real mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. and I was able to join him from the beginning. So mm -hmm. from the beginning of establishing the education mm -hmm. center, I mean testing center so yeah I mean uh, at the big uh, I mean we he let's say 
uh, we had a consultancy agency mm -hmm. running. And one of the challenges we had is in order to be able to send the students to other countries, especially English speaking countries, they had they need to have an IELTS test, IELTS certificate or TOEFL. But the IELTS was dominant and it was most popular. So IELTS was something that uh, we always, uh, I mean, student has to have. And then we found that it's become a challenging mm -hmm. that there was a certain periods when the getting to, I mean, uh, able to take the test, it was difficult. So then I said, why not to create opportunity mm -hmm. to the students? Because there was a time when we used to send the students to other countries as well to take the test uh, in order to be able to meet the deadlines, mm -hmm. which is what placed, uh, had in place. So then he went to Australia, made a deal, uh, negotiated with them, and mm -hmm. we started the process and everything, mm -hmm. and eventually came to the point where we actually established the testing center. Mm -hmm. uh, it started with a small. Uh, I remember uh, our first test, we only had 20 people. Whereas now, uh, I remember on our biggest session, which we had on the 17th of December, Anyway, it was the last uh, testing day of the 2023 mm -hmm. when we had the 2,200 people taking the test in one day. And in one day? In one day. Uh, was it all under one roof? Or no, no, no. It venues? was different venues, uh -huh. different location, but still, but it was still just in one day. That's so for nuts. us, it was quite a challenge. You said 2,000, right? 2,200. 2,200. Two, that's in one day. In one day. In one day. Yeah. So if you think from that perspective, it yeah. was a huge mm -hmm. jump. It, it is. It. Yeah, it took us. Mm -hmm. But as I said, uh, when we started, we had the idea uh, how, where are we going, where we want to do, uh, and definitely, and all that. I mean, what was important for us, what we realized that, that we need to have a strong team mm -hmm. that not only met in terms of qualification, to mm -hmm. be honest, I really realized that the qualification wasn't really important in our case. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the most important things that uh, where we can have a people team whom we can trust really, mm -hmm. who shares our values, mm -hmm. whom we can work with, mm -hmm. And we put the lot of effort to find these people, to to foster these people, uh, basically, mm -hmm. sometimes. Uh, I remember, like, I can say that, uh, you know, that the, most of our staff who is working with us at the moment, even the people who is uh, actually become a managers and the decision-making person in our company actually started as invigilators, mm -hmm. for example. So we created the system where the people basically will work on themselves, they will develop constantly and will be able to achieve something more and something that re they mm -hmm. want to, let's say, desire, let's say. Mm -hmm. So, and basically it was more about that place where they want to come every day and work. Mm -hmm. Honestly, there was a few, uh, that's one of the decisions I made uh, actually when I was creating the environment uh, with Umid John is uh, there was a certain organization whom I worked, I really hated. I really mm -hmm. don't want to go to these places. And eventually I quit. So and I said, we should have a, some place, we should create the place where not only you and me wants to come, but everyone mm -hmm. else wants to come and mm -hmm. work with. So I mean, I guess at the moment we kind of, uh, doing quite well. Oh, so field. how did you exactly build that kind of a team and working environment? Uh, as I said, we decided that uh, we started from the small things. Mm -hmm. So we started giving the small responsibility to the team. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I was on my own. There was only two person who were working with me and they were actually combining the study abroad consultancy work mm -hmm. <laughs> with the working for the mm -hmm. uh, testing center. Mm -hmm. Then eventually, uh, we start hiring more people and giving the simple tasks mm -hmm. to see what kind of people they are. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when we see that the, uh, they can learn, they can Mm -hmm. uh, be trusted uh, mm -hmm. that they really want to do achieve something new and mm -hmm. we start giving them more and more responsibility and one by one we build up the team which mm -hmm. we have right now and now 
they do the same thing. They hire the people. Mm-hmm. They o- overthink some of the people. They teach them how to do the certain things. They just mm-hmm. kind of passing on the, as I said, mm-hmm. the uh, qualities and wa- values we mm-hmm. had to those new people coming. So it was like uh, for first year, I think we only had a seven people. Mm-hmm. Whereas now we have a 45 people working in the testing center, which is not include the volunteers Mm-hmm. which is about 300 people, something like that. So, yes. So it was more about the, as I said, uh, values we have. Mm-hmm. There was a certain period when, uh, I think it was 2019, or end of the 2018 anyway. So we said to the guys, okay, so we established the company. Umijan, we were having the conversation with Umijan saying like, we know what we want. What do you think? Does the team knows what we wanted? Mm-hmm. Does the team knows what exactly we're thinking about it? So, and I said, probably one of the most crucial thing that we need to do is think about the core values of the company. And what we did is actually we throw this idea to the team and said, mm-hmm. think about it. Mm-hmm. What kind in what kind of company do you want to really work with? Mm-hmm. Think about the core values which one you want to see in this company, mm-hmm. and all of them came with the different ideas. There was a five, six, seven, ten core values they mm-hmm. really, really wanted, and we sat together. We had a conversation. We mm-hmm. went one by one from what each other, challenging each other's core values and mm-hmm. ideas. And at the end, we decided that the three will be the core values of the company that we're gonna build this company based on this. So this will be the base for every decision we make. And one of them is, I'm gonna can say that, uh, is one of them is a trust. Mm-hmm. So we said, if there is no trust, we can't work. Mm-hmm. That's it. So if there is no trust between you and me, if there is no trust to our products and our services, if there is no trust uh, to the product we're selling and mm-hmm. the service we're doing, there is no point of doing this business. So mm-hmm. trust was most important thing that we need to we thought about. It. The second was about the confidentiality. Mm-hmm. We realized that the confidentiality that things that we cannot compromise. You know, you understand that the how crucial for us is to keep the test materials intact. Uh, not to, I mean, look, look. Uh, we actually go against in sharing the test materials around Uzbekistan because this is the product by someone who entrusted to us. And if we're going to sell it, if we're going to share with other people, we basically, uh, let's say, we'll let those people down. Mm-hmm. Actually, where we promise them we're not going to do that. So it's one of the things that we talk about. That. And also when we talk about the confidentiality, it's not only about the test materials, it's about the candidates' uh, details. It's about the uh, the whole process in the company. Like if the person is coming, we say that, this is certain things is confidential. Please don't talk about it with other people. This is company's information kind of thing. So confidentiality was second thing that was really important to us. And the third one, uh, we had a different name, but I guess in English it sounds like integrity. Mm-hmm. One of the main problems we had is no matter what the situation is, no matter what kind of what happens, never ever compromise the integrity. Basically, it was more about, you know, selling the certificate or Mm -hmm. kind of altering the candidate's results or Mm -hmm. making the money of Mm -hmm. changing the scores of the candidate. And said, this shouldn't happen. And anyone in the company have never should ever compromise these kind of things because otherwise there will be no point all Mm -hmm. everything will fall apart. So one of the things, so these kind of things help to, people to understand and realize where they're coming, for whom they're working, and what kind of environment they're working. So when they agree, and when we saw that people is understanding these kind of core values, that's helped to create the company, create the team that is working right now in this whole project. How do you go about, or how do you deal with those people who don't respect those core values, or those people who- We get rid of them. And how, how do you go about that process? We simply, if they get making mistakes, as I said, mm-hmm. uh, in, a, in our company, I'll tell you something. I'll tell to every my staff, every person whom I work with, everyone make mistake. Mm-hmm. 
let's be honest, we're all human beings, we always make mistakes. And I said, everyone is allowed to make mistakes. It shouldn't be repeated, first mm -hmm. of all. But, but, when you make a decision to do certain things, remember these three core values. So when you make a decision, test them against each other. Is it not going to again? Is it uh, is it not going to ruin uh, our trust relationship? If it does, don't do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you're breaking the, uh, let's say, confidentiality, say, don't. Think about it twice. And same goes to the integrity, for example. And when we find out about it, usually I speak with them. Mm -hmm. And I said, what was the reason behind it? Mm -hmm. And if I felt that he did it on purpose, mm -hmm. because as I said, there might be some mistakes that people mm -hmm. do without even understanding the, uh, let's say, uh, consequences of their action or their word or anything else. But when I realized that it's actually did on purpose, knowingly that will be consequences, but he thought he can get away with it, end of the story. Mm -hmm. The close is shattered and mm -hmm. we just say, fire sayonara to that person and that's mm. it end of the story i'll tell you there was a, even the the uh, uh e events mm -hmm. i would say or uh when we actually even was prosecuted to some of the people you mean by your employees for uh, the it wasn't direct employees it was actually the one of the partners one of the person who was actually working for us mm -hmm. so he misused our trust he mm -hmm. misused our system and we actually even went to the uh, certain stage that we're going to prosecute that mm -hmm. guy to be honest actually he ran away and flew to another country <laughs> it's it's the real uh, story yeah certainly but it is like that and it's it's challenging it's not something that we achieved and just forget about it it's mm -hmm. something that we're working constantly on it so mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's ongoing process all mm -hmm. the time but for any person who breaks the rule that's it mm -hmm. end of the story bye bye that's it right. yeah, because as I said, look, uh, you know that uh, there is lots of guys coming to do the offsite testing, for example. I entrust the materials to them. Mm -hmm. If I don't have a trust for them, mm -hmm. how can I be able to work? How mm -hmm. can I be able to do the offsite testing? So mm -hmm. it is challenging stuff. So, yeah. So if you found out any one of the partners you yeah. have, I mean... It's not only the partners. It's about the, let's say, if we're going to talk about the legal terms. Mm -hmm. Every employees who work for us sign up the certain uh, uh, papers where actually one of them is explicitly stating that if we're gonna find out that they're breaking the certain rules which is placed by the company, uh, that we have a right to prosecute them, not mm -hmm. just to fire them, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna take an action to actually mm -hmm. prosecute them. So this is one of the things uh, that we put in place if mm -hmm. we're talking about the legal terms well i hope we're not gonna i don't like yeah go going that. to that extension yeah. and uh, go through that process yeah. to be honest it's not pleasant and the reason why i asked you this question is this is one of the hardest aspects of my job here dealing with staff when they don't fall in line yeah and then i have to enforce those rules like yep. i have the so-called therapy sessions with them I have. I tell them swing by my room later tonight, and they will. And we sit down and talk for two hours straight. Yep. It's almost midnight, yep. right? And 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 we we're not only talking about their you know job here or responsibilities here. We're talking about their life in general because I like to take more of yeah. a holistic approach, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Because I try to look at the underlying problem. It might it might be because they are just having going through a bad patch in their personal life. Yep. Right, with their mom, dad, or their sibling, or university life, and that seemed to be carry on to, into their job. It, so, yeah. it is happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, and, and when I find out it was just pure negligence or ignorance or lack of accountability, then I have, I have to break them the news. I have to tell them they can't be with us anymore, and that's what, hard, one of the hardest things to do. Yep. Right. I agree and, with you. Uh, what's you know what's funny? I actually. I'm not happy about this, but I had to let go one of our employees after our conversation, my conversation with you, me and my Alicia's conversation yeah. with you, uh, 
before our second podcast. Oh, really? And your action podcast where you told us about KPI system and yeah. managing staff, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. The entire time I was thinking there, sitting there and thinking about that <laughs> employee. Mm. We're gonna. We found out they haven't been responsible as they should be, that they're ignoring their responsibilities, right? And but but the the hard part was that they had been with us since the beginning, right? So they they they've helped us a lot to get the school off the ground, yeah, right. And it it was hard to break them the news and tell them that they they were being let go. Well, it's not right. gonna be easy at all mm. anytime soon. Anyway, mm. especially if you. Uh, Let's say, uh, Especially for me, it was always challenging. Okay. It's still challenging uh, uh -huh. to fire someone or give the some kind of bad feedbacks or uh -huh. something like. It has been always challenging, mm -hmm. but you have to learn if you mm -hmm. want to keep up. But what I'm trying to do differently from the for based on my own experience, I'm trying to be honest with those people. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to give them explanation of my decision, how I came to this decision. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to ask them mm -hmm. what they would do if they were in my shoes, basically, mm -hmm. literally. So when it comes to the, mm -hmm. so you mentioned about the KPI, about mm -hmm. our conversation and everything. Look, uh, we have a certain procedures in our company, certain system, which we're trying to follow. So there is mm -hmm. a KPI system. There is a rule that everyone has to come on time. Mm -hmm. Then, then <clears throat> there is certain rules that certain th jobs has to be done by these deadlines mm -hmm. or something like that. Because mm -hmm. on IELTS, believe me, there is mm -hmm. lots of deadlines. Mm -hmm. You missed one, uh, mm -hmm. the whole test is ruined. Mm -hmm. To be honest, so mm -hmm. I said we know this. So what one of the part of my job is give the training. Mm -hmm. to give them ability to learn about it and to make them that they are aware of this process and all mm -hmm. that stuff. The second one is when we were establishing the company, especially at the beginning, what we did is actually we tried to do it with the team itself. Mm -hmm. So we asked them about it. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. What do you see about it? Mm -hmm. What's your opinion about the certain things? For mm -hmm. example, as I said, as the example of the core value, it's not like one day we sit with the Umi John and make a decision about mm -hmm. it and said, this is a core value. Do you want to follow? Follow. If you don't want it, goodbye. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. We asked the team about it. Mm -hmm. And when they come up with this idea, it was easy for them to follow it. And the same with the new rules and regulations, which we trying to put in place, for example. Mm -hmm. Same as, for example, uh, with the KPI system. So there was a, uh, the KPI system, which we have at the moment, which help us a lot. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it, was, it mm -hmm. changed the many things in our organization, mm -hmm. but it was uh, put in place about three years ago only. Mm -hmm after the COVID, for example. And mm. when we place that in place, we give them idea, this is what we wanted to do. And they come up with a solution, basically. And now we come to the point when they fight over this KPI, mm -hmm. saying like, guys, no, mm -hmm. you, pro you ask us about this, you mm -hmm. showed us this, so let's fight over it. Mm -hmm. So every process we're trying to, what we're trying to implement, mm -hmm. we're trying to discuss with the team and mm -hmm. wants to get their approval and acceptance mm -hmm. rather than just saying like, this is a rule and do mm -hmm. it. And it makes them much easier mm -hmm. of implementing these changes. So this right. is one of the things I would advise. Yeah. I'm personally a big supporter of this management style too. Yeah. But at the same time, something you should keep in mind. Yeah. I'm probably already know this. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, on, yeah. who were kidding? You, you <laughs> had a lot of experience managing people, right? Yeah. yeah. But but it's something I've recently learned is sometimes when you're too, you know, democratic in the yeah. way you manage your school or your organization, lines get kind of blurred. It's lines, for sure. Lines get blurred. No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. When I said I'm giving the opportunity, uh -huh. it doesn't mean that they have uh -huh. a, let's say, let's final words is still <laughs> remains mm -hmm. yes. on me and Umijan, yeah. let's say. We give the chance to the people mm -hmm. to make a decision, to make amendments, to mm -hmm. do something differently. Mm -hmm. But if they can't do that, if they cannot make up their minds, mm -hmm. if they can't find the solution for that problem, if they mm -hmm. see that we're, they're going in the different direction, mm -hmm. we're trying to teach them and everything, but there will be some of the decision when they say there is no solution. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to compromise on anything. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, it comes to the point when we mm -hmm. say, that's the final word, mm -hmm. let's say, and that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. So we use that tool as well. We are kind of uh, make it... Uh, 
uh, autocratic decision as well. Mm -hmm. But this is the last resort mm -hmm. which we use. We try to yeah. keep it to the, as a as the last thing that we're mm -hmm. gonna use it. Mm -hmm. But before that, we're trying to give them opportunity to mm -hmm. say and express. I had the same situation mm -hmm. a few days ago, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have a problems now, and mm -hmm. I, I address this problem. And I said, that this is not the first time when I'm addressing this problem. And I ask you about solution, and I ask you, for example, your, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, uh, cooperation in this, but mm -hmm. I don't see any difference. So now, this is the final call. If you can make a change, do it. Otherwise, in two days or in three days, I will just make a decision mm -hmm. and you will have to accept it or not. Mm -hmm. So I give them chance, but mm -hmm. let's say with the deadlines. So that, that's the how, it, at least, we're trying to work with the team. Yeah, that sounds very fair, yeah. right? right. So. Because you can't always leave everything up to discussion because then it's going to get dra it's, it's going to drag for days weeks months right because yeah that's true so, so that's why we give yeah. them deadlines and say yeah. and uh, and i mean we're trying to give them as much as possible opportunity mm -hmm. to be involved in the company's life mm -hmm. but to the certain extent mm -hmm. uh, to the certain point where actually they can make a decision mm -hmm. and remember not everyone is uh, thinking the same way as you, mm -hmm. first of all, and the mm -hmm. second thing is, everyone has got their own agenda. Mm -hmm. Remember, oh, yeah. so you need to remember about that. Right. So your mm -hmm. job is direct them in mm -hmm. the in the way that you really wanted. But mm -hmm. if you see that it's not possible, then mm -hmm. you don't have really choice other than just mm -hmm. say that's that's the line. Right. Yeah. All right, that was a long talk about management. Now, yeah. what do you say we take a little break from career and education, mm -hmm. uh, all that, and talk a little about your personal life, if you don't mind it? My personal life? Yeah. But what exactly, you wanna, we're, we're what exactly you want to know? So, well, first uh, set of questions I have in mind is about uh, winning a green card. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and living in the U.S. So my. Okay. my okay. Yes. The, the question uh, I've been at the moment. Yes, I'm living in U.S. Uh -huh. At least I'm trying to live for the two countries. Uh -huh. So I'm traveling back and forth, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to live in U.S. and Uzbekistan as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was something, as I said, something mm -hmm. challenging for me. Mm -hmm. So when I got the opportunity to be able to travel and live in the United States, I said. Why not? Mm -hmm. This is another challenge. Why mm -hmm. not to do it something differently? Mm -hmm. And I accepted that. Mm -hmm. So uh, now it seems like everything is working out. It's mm -hmm. still fine. Uh, I, at the beginning, I had a doubt about how it's going to happen uh, with the company. Mm -hmm. uh, how what will be my place if I'm going to leave mm -hmm. and be? Will I be able to work remotely mm -hmm. from the other country? And I had lots of concern, but it turns out to be. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. Actually, there was a point when I was laughing and making mm -hmm. the, uh, since I left the, I mean, mm -hmm. position, I mean, acting uh, mm -hmm. director, kind of, because my team, the people who is working there at the moment, running the company, mm -hmm. managing the company. And I said, since I left, apparently you're, uh, you're doing much better than when I was in the company. Yeah. <laughs> so and I was and I was telling to Imijon, uh, hope you're not gonna start thinking about it. That <laughs> it was good that Akmal is not around anymore. Yeah. That's actually the uh, the team is doing well. So we uh, kind of kind of laugh about it, but it seems like everything yeah. is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say much about my life in the United States because it only mm -hmm. has been like a, mm -hmm. less than a year now. Mm -hmm. So I still has a lot of things to learn about it. I still has got a lot of things to think about it mm -hmm. uh, do I really want to stay in that country do I mm -hmm. really want to live in that country with my family and mm -hmm. foster my kids there mm -hmm. so the, I have a lots of concerns still mm -hmm. and I haven't found the answer for that yet so yeah. I'm still in the process of uh, doing that when it comes to your so which state did you are you stationed then uh, yeah. at the moment I'm living in Philadelphia uh -huh. uh, it's uh, in Pennsylvania state it's mm -hmm. not far away from the New Jersey and from New York actually mm -hmm. basically uh, what was surprising to me to find out is actually the Philadelphia I believe at the moment has got the largest Uzbek community in the United States <laughs> it's literally you can right. see the mm -hmm. Uzbeks 
everywhere in uh-huh. Philadelphia, especially in the area where I live. Like imagine walking into a store and saying, yeah. I want to buy something yeah, in yeah. English, but they reply back yeah, in Uzbek. Ba- <laughs> usually you speak in Russian because basically that area where I live is more like a Russian speaking area. And when there is uh-huh. Russians, Ukrainians, mm-hmm. Georgians, mm-hmm. Uzbeks, some um, Tajiks, and uh, mm-hmm. the, some of the people from the Kazakhstan and mm-hmm. the Turkmenia as well. So from former USSR countries. Mm-hmm. So that area is basically uh, former mm-hmm. USSR countries uh, people lives mm-hmm. there if you go to the like uh, I'll, I posted some uh, picture from the library actually mm-hmm. it's a public library if you go there there is a sign in the six or seven languages one of them is Uzbek wow. please uh, keep a silent like iltimos jimlikni sukunatni saqlang degan so it's wow. really how it That's is how how the Uzbek influence are uh, so lots of my friends, lots of my colleagues and the yeah. people who know that I was in US, they asked me, do you miss Uzbekistan? Do you miss mm. our food? Do you miss mm. this, this, this? And I said, yeah. honestly, <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> because literally like one of, one of the things that I miss, it's about my friends, about mm. my family. It's about mm. my relationship. It's about my team. It's mm. about the EduAction company. And it's definitely something that I miss that can't be replaced anyway. But when it comes to the like a food, for example, which mm. many people ask me about it, no, it's not mm. the problem. Actually, one of the difficulties I have is I don't have, I can't find the good burgers mm-hmm. or shawarma, mm-hmm. <laughs> literally. But basically in the two kilometers area where I live, there mm-hmm. is the eight restaurants, Uzbek restaurants. So they're mm-hmm. making all the foods which is available in Uzbekistan there. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 good. It's going to be some kind of advertisement for Ermak, but uh-huh. you know the court Ermak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there. If you want it, you can buy in the store. Wow. <laughs> so that that's the how the thing is. And did you choose to be stationed there, or it was? No. Uh, how how does it work? Like, did did they put you there, or no. you choose the state? No, yourself? you choose it on your own. Uh-huh. Basically, you they never tell mm-hmm. you which ta- state or where to go. So mm-hmm. when you make your application, so when mm-hmm. you find out that you have been selected, mm-hmm. so you have a certain period to. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. fill up the application form. Mm-hmm. So in the application form, you show that mm-hmm. uh, uh, they ask you which address in the United States you're going to use. And unfortunately, that's one of the problematic parts about this application. So you need to find out who can basically help you out or at least give you the address where you can send all your documents. So I had a, I was lucky. I'm sure everyone in Uzbekistan has got the relatives and friends in the United States, mm-hmm. at least. So I had a friend from the school, so he was kind enough, said, you can show my address. And actually, he provided me with the accommodation as well when mm-hmm. I went to U.S. Basically, that was uh, uh, why I chose to go to Philadelphia, basically. He said he I can stay in his apartment, basically. So I'm using. So nice. it was quite easy to go and settle down. So that's why I decided to live in Philadelphia. But I'm thinking about to moving to another state. To mm-hmm. be honest, is that because you're fed up with Uzbeks? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not fed up with Uzbek. I just wanted something differently. And yeah. as I said, uh, now at the moment I have an opportunity to travel around and mm-hmm. see for myself to experience it. So I went to Florida and I really liked it. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking about to moving to Florida mm-hmm. by the end of this year, probably. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll see. You. Uh, how the things turn uh, will ha- turns out. Anyway. Uh, what's the political situation like in the U.S. right now? Because what I see on the news is all, you know, Democrats versus uh, Republicans, and there's election coming up. This, yeah, it's election this year. coming up. Uh, apparently, it's uh, one of the huge events that's going to have an impact not only in the U.S. but globally. I yeah. see. I believe. Yeah. But if you're gonna ask me. Uh-huh. I don't watch TV anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't watch the news anymore. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to be away from these mm-hmm. political battles mm-hmm. which is happening in the in the United mm-hmm. States in the field, to be honest. So I can't say much about it, but it's really happening. Mm-hmm. It You can feel that the people are concerned about it, who's mm-hmm. going to be the next president. Uh, at the sun, really, I mean, the people will, mm-hmm. uh, from what I have learned, uh, to be honest, as, as, at least that was my feeling and uh, uh, experience is 
they don't like any of the candidates. <laughs> There is a group of people and it's a yeah. majority that mm -hmm. simply doesn't want to see the uh, Biden or Trump to be mm -hmm. the president. They mm -hmm. don't want, they want to see the other people. Mm -hmm. But apparently the political system in the United States, uh, we know that it's a complicated, it's not easy. So I believe the people don't have much choice to mm -hmm. decide it at the moment. And the, the choice is Trump or Biden, mm -hmm. that's it. And who are you voting for? Uh, well, I don't have a voting <laughs> uh, right. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and the wo or voting rights is given only to the citizens. Uh -huh. I'm not a citizen you of the United States. No, I only yeah. have a residency. So mm -hmm. I have a right to live and work in the United States. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a full citizen there. So mm -hmm. I'm not have a... But I don't know. Uh, it's tough questions. Yeah. So why, you know... I have never ever attended any voting in Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I was always out of political systems of that game. I don't know, maybe I was a little bit pessimistic about mm -hmm. it, saying like I don't really have a influence on certain mm -hmm. things. So why should I bother to go and vote on something else that I don't really believe? To be honest, some of the candidates, some of the certain things that are happening, I don't really like it. And I said, I can't make any changes, so why should I be bothered? But this position is, I believe someone will oppose it and say like it's wrong. I guess to some extent it's wrong mm -hmm. because... Uh, If everyone will think that way, saying, I don't have a power, I don't have an ability to change, then nothing will change, mm -hmm. literally. So over the periods, over the years, I, I'm thinking that maybe I made some of the mm -hmm. uh, wrong decision and maybe I will consider my mm -hmm. decision in the future. But at the moment, I don't like being involved in any politicians. Mm -hmm. That's why the, one of the reasons I don't want to think about it, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, politics is always complicated. Yeah. It's complicated. But make the thing simple i found myself more conservative than the democrat mm. uh, democratic yeah. democratic i would uh -huh. say uh, I, uh, certainly on mm. the certain uh topics mm. i feel that i'm i'm becoming more conservative mm -hmm. how it's gonna have an effect on my political views i mm. don't know mm -hmm. i'm not saying that i'm gonna Uh, I would have voted for Trump, mm -hmm. not Biden. I'm not saying that, but generally, I'm thinking that uh, I my views becoming more mm -hmm. conservative. To be honest, right? So. And you're honestly never, you know, always on one side. Like it really changes depending on what topic you're discussing. Like when it comes to maybe cultural values, you're yeah. more conservative. Yeah. But when it comes to technology, running a business, you yeah. try being more democratic. Yes, that's for sure. Right? The the things what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, it's about the tradition, it's about the mm -hmm. politics, it's about certain things in the, mm -hmm. uh, in my life. But definitely, mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to be open mm -hmm. and tolerant to many things but at the same times uh i'm trying to stick to my mm -hmm. culture world uh, values as mm -hmm. i said so it's it's as i said it's not it's fight within you as well all mm -hmm. the time it's a fight between who you are and who you want to become mm -hmm. so this is not gonna end in never it's gonna end mm -hmm. never so it's going it's ongoing process all yeah. the time so we'll see right uh, And would you mind me asking you some questions yeah. about family life as well? Okay. All right. As uh, because every time I have someone way older than me on the podcast, yeah. I want to get some advice from them on you know uh, on f future you know family uh, life. So, uh, or nah. is it going to be a problem? <laughs> uh, it's going to be a problem because I don't But like. We're going to try to keep questions more general. Like, uh, what do you look for in a good spouse? I right, say someone. Ah. So what are some qualities or features, traits you would look for a uh, you know, future partner? Mm. One of the things I, mm. well, one of the criterias when I was choosing my spouse and I was thinking about it always, I really want to have a partner mm -hmm. rather than someone who is going to be following me, mm -hmm. let's say. Uh, independent person who has got to their, let's say, uh, own mind, own mind, who can make their own decision, mm -hmm. who can stand up even against my decision sometimes. Uh, let's okay. say, a little someone, rebellious. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, and I wouldn't say rebellious. At least someone who has, uh, uh, as I said, has got 
their mm-hmm. own ideas. Yeah, individualistic. And individualistic, who is not afraid of talking mm-hmm. about certain things. Mm-hmm. So someone who is actually, as I said, I would say independent. Mm-hmm. That would be the correct way to say. So uh, that's the quality I'm mm-hmm. looking for mm-hmm. in, in a person. So because uh, I didn't want someone who is going to be following me. I w- mm-hmm. always wanted someone with whom I'm going to be living with, uh, mm-hmm. whom, with whom I'm going to be the uh let's say live my life and mm-hmm. uh, go through a certain path mm-hmm. someone who is going to be next to me rather than mm-hmm. at my back to mm-hmm. be honest so that's the idea i had mm-hmm. but when it comes to the uh, qualities i believe everyone has to decision uh, have to make a decision on their own based on their belief mm-hmm. faith and uh, education and uh, actually the mm-hmm. uh, with family mm-hmm. uh with his based on their family values. relationships yeah values, values basically yes yeah right right but but number one thing you would look for a potential partner would be for sure independence yes right? for right? sure Being someone who can take care of themselves someone definitely. who's I would individualistic love to. bold yeah. yeah got it so right and what are some lessons you'd like to teach your kids from an early age or early what are some age? lessons you are teaching your own kids from a from a young age I, I don't mean necessarily a skill but important life lessons that you think children should be taught from the age of say four or five right for me as i said uh, through our conversation i said mm-hmm. about the uh, crucial thinking yeah, critical mm-hmm. thinking i want my kids to be able to think critically Mm-hmm. to think about you know george carling have you heard about that person? no not really so one person he is a comedian at the same time he talks about he used to talk he passed away he talks about the politics and the uh, complicated subjects mm-hmm. one of the things he said is don't just teach your children read mm-hmm. teach your children question everything what they read mm-hmm. So uh, one of the ideas about uh, raising my kid is I want to give them ability to think. So that's why whatever I do, whatever I ask them to do, I give them a choice. I'm trying to explain to them why it has to be done. And I give them an opportunity to decide that which one they want to, let's say, even it's, it's, it's even, even the simple things, for example. Do you want an apple or do you want a banana? Mm-hmm. It's a simple thing. But I want them to constantly think that there is a choice that they can make and that choice leads to some kind of consequences mm-hmm. and uh, to some kind of path. Mm-hmm. So whatever I try to do, something like, do you want to go to the supermarket or do you want to have an ice cream mm-hmm. or do you want to have, a let's say, lemonade or something mm-hmm. like that? So I always try to give them a choice. Mm-hmm. So I believe in your life is all about making choice all the time mm-hmm. and ability to make a right choice, make your life happy or mm-hmm. miserable. Mm-hmm. So that's the one thing that I want. Of course, when it comes to the other things, like I'm trying to um, teach them to read. I'm trying to, I, I do my best to restrict them from watching the anima- mm-hmm. <laughs> animation on the TV, uh-huh. uh, let's say, but still. Uh, I'm not really successful on that. So, and uh, another thing so I would love to uh, see on my kids, I want them to be, I mean, play and joyful mm-hmm. while they can, to mm-hmm. be honest. That's the, that's the idea. I don't want to uh, put them in a box saying like, you need to learn all the time. You need to read all the time. You need to know this knowledge before you get to the certain age. I don't really want to do that. I really want them have ability to decide for themselves. That's the idea mm-hmm. in my mind. I right. hope that's gonna, I'm, I will succeed on that. Yeah. That, so that, they, that, will, they will choose for themselves when they will grow up eventually, uh, little by little that uh, they can do and have a control of their own life, let's say. Yeah, that's quite a unique parenting style that n- I never thought of, right? Yeah. And I'm here, you know, sitting and listening and taking notes in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because all, all these lessons and because I know will come all these pa- because now you mm-hmm. see there is a uh, let's say tendency mm-hmm. to teach the children language all the time, to mm-hmm. teach the children math, 
take them to the mm -hmm. uh, sports club, to mm -hmm. the swimming, then to the football. To mm -hmm. it's like sometimes you just make the decision uh, on the behalf of your kids. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely, I'm gonna do certain things as well from this. So I'm, what I'm saying is, I'm gonna try to teach them language as well. I'm mm -hmm. trying to teach them math. I'll mm -hmm. definitely help them to be successful in their education. Mm -hmm. I will definitely try to. Uh, persuade them to go to do some sport activities as well but at the same side uh, i don't want to push them i just mm -hmm. want to teach them and show them why they need this mm -hmm. and if they can do that if they're interested on that if i can be confident enough or I, if i will able to build the interest on that i will be more than happy but it's not like uh, I want to fulfill my dreams and see them mm -hmm. on my kids. That's mm -hmm. the, I definitely want to see that. I can see that in some parents, like I'd, I want, uh, I always want to become a doctor. So it will be great that if my daughter or my son will become a doctor. No, it's not like that. I want them to choose for mm -hmm. themselves. My dream is my dream. They mm -hmm. dream, I want them to have their own dream. That's the kind mm -hmm. of idea that, it's in my mind. I mean, you're a very supportive dad for sure. Yeah, yeah you're I hope so. a dream dad. Like, yeah. I, I wish I could be your child. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, supportive dad. Well, like, it's not as perfect as uh, it sounds in the yeah. reality. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes uh, you can be very cruel and harsh Definitely. Right, when kids yeah. uh, play well, naughty. Well, I, I totally understand uh -huh. that my kids, I mean, uh, they don't make their uh -huh. own decision. They uh -huh. just let's say mm -hmm. they're still in process of learning. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do is trying to direct them, give mm -hmm. them chance at least. Mm -hmm. As I said, at some certain pace, I said, no, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the end of the story. So what are some off limit things for your kids? Like they never, you would never want them to do? Uh, I wouldn't say, no, 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 I wouldn't say that there is a limit or something like that, but I, there is certainly some qualities and the values I want to see in mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And one of them is about the respecting the old generation, respecting the family, respecting the parents, respecting the grandfather, respecting the, your siblings. And this is what mm -hmm. I really want to see on them. So I do my best to mm -hmm. teach them that this is how so certain behavior is not acceptable in mm -hmm. this family, for example. So th uh, that, that's the, I wouldn't say it's a line or cross line. Like this is something I want to see on them, especially and I'm trying to teach them. That's that's probably why you're hesitant about sending them to U.S. schools where they are taught to question everybody. Well, my my kid, my kid is too young seniors. to go to the school, uh, uh -huh. so I'm still have a time, time to, to make a decision <laughs> on that. Let's let's put yeah. it that way. So yeah. I'm still in process uh -huh. whether I want to go uh -huh. in that direction or not, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you see, I'm opposing the idea about that. Mm -hmm. the, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm the idea that. Everyone in the United States is. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the implementation of the the sentence you said means that everyone in the United States is bad or has got uh, very corrupted uh, values or something like that. No, not it's, necessarily. Uh, well, m many people think that way. If you're gonna give your child to the school, mm -hmm. then it's his or her life mm -hmm. will be ruined or something like that. They will become a fully American or something mm -hmm. like that. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean it's bad, to be honest, honestly. It doesn't mean the people who live in the United States are bad people. There's lots of good people who has got the something that mm -hmm. worse to admire, to be honest. So yes, certainly they do the certain things differently from us, but it doesn't necessarily s mm -hmm. means that it's bad, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, as I said. So as I... I'm still in the process of uh -huh. making up my mind about the, where I'm going and mm -hmm. the, what I'm going to do. But the one thing for sure that I need to tell to the parent is in the United States, in not in the United States, in the Western culture, when you go to another country, actually, it's just about that you have to spend more time on on working with your kids than you are in Uzbekistan, for example. Because uh, your kids basically, like for example, take your family, for example, there is your father, uh, your grandfather, grandparents, your, there is your aunts, there is your brothers, there is your friends who actually shape your, shape you who you are and actually have an effect on your values. 
I understand that United States is a different values in that society. And my uh, aim is to make sure that my kids will understand the difference between these two values, as I said, and make their own decision whether uh, try to take it as 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 the good part of them as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in order to do that, I cannot solely rely on the society or solely rely on the people who surround us because they have got the, as I said, different values. So now. I have to work on my kids, with my kids a lot. I have to spend more time with them to explain to them what's right and what's wrong. What's my idea behind this this ideology? What's my faith? What's my belief? And why I came to this point, these kind of things. So this is what the parents usually forgot about it and they complain about it. If you go to United States, this happens. Yeah, chance that it's gonna be bad is higher, but only if you neglect it, only if you don't not gonna spend the time with your kids. That's the story. Mm-hmm. That that that's the reality. Yeah, parenting is a is a daunting job. It's it is it's a, a full time job. Full time job. It's full time job. Full-time I'm job. lucky that my wife, uh, let's say, at the moment she's not working. Uh, she used to work, but now she's not working, and she has got to, uh, time to mm-hmm. spend uh, on our kids. Mm-hmm. So she's like a full time mom at the mm-hmm. moment, and that that's the uh, hello to, a lot of relief for uh-huh. us because now I I'm earning enough to sustain my family, whereas my wife has the ability to spend more time with my with my kids. Mm-hmm. So that that's the something that I really appreciated, to be honest. Yeah. Oh my God! I'm just sitting and thinking about my uh, future, you know, family life and my kids. I'm starting to realize that I, it's it's a lot of responsibility which I'm not ready for, right? You're and never ready. I'm gonna never, tell you something. You're never gonna get ready. Seriously. Uh huh. It's just gonna go and do it. Yes. <laughs> just go and do when it. When you feel that and you uh, you want it, just go and do it. Seriously. Uh-huh. You will never be ready. Because, listen, uh, if we're going to follow your logic, then there should be some age restriction or age limit saying, Mm -hmm. like, after the 30, if I'm going to get married, I'm going to be happy. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. Whenever the age you go get married, Mm -hmm. your happiness and Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't really, I mean, doesn't relate to the time when you got married. Mm -hmm. It's constant work. It's yeah. acceptance of the responsibility. <laughs> only time, only things that I would advise to the people, for the young people who wants to get married, just think about yourself. Are you ready to take the responsibility mm-hmm. for other person? That's it. If you feel that you can do that, go for it. Mm-hmm. It's not something that you need to do after the 30 or before the 30 or after 25, mm-hmm. basically. But... Uh, Simple advice. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. never, you never get ready for that. I'm not, I'm not exactly worried about the, you know the raising kids part or you know marriage part because I know I'm going to figure it out along the way. What I'm worried about is having to spend less time at work and more time with my family, which, which is something I'm not prepared for. That's what I meant. I'm not worried about like figuring out how to bring up my kids or, you know, you know spending time with family and, mm-hmm. and all that. It's just. Uh, I got a lot going for me right now and I kind of feel like starting a family would take away from this experience, take away from my my career and all that, which is a, you know, uh, that, that's a big trade-off. That's I would challenge this mm-hmm. a little bit. You know sure. why? Uh, uh, I have to choose the correct. Uh, for that. You know, we have a word in Uzbek, baraka. Oh, I, I don't know. Anyone? Anyway, uh, probably... I the, can look it up real quick. Yeah. I don't think so you will find the translation for that probably word. Not, anyway, probably, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, that's culturally unique word. Yeah, unique word. Uh-huh. So you don't really have a translation for that. Uh, think from that perspective. Uh-huh. Yes. Don't think about what you're going to give up. Think mm-hmm. about what you're going to gain. Probably you will find the wife and your mm-hmm. kids, your family will something that will drive you to do even more, even better. Mm-hmm. You never know. Mm-hmm. So baraka comes with the family. Baraka mm-hmm. comes with the uh, with the let's say with your wife, with your kid. Mm-hmm. We also have a word called risk. Mm-hmm. So maybe 
uh, you're destined to sustain your family in that way mm -hmm. that you can never imagine. So they probably, their risk maybe will adapt to yours mm -hmm. and you will have even more quality life than you can even imagine. Mm -hmm. So don't think about what's going to get, uh, what you're going to lose. Think about it, what can you gain? Mm -hmm. Honestly, thinking, think about from that perspective. You know, man's mm -hmm. we don't need much in our life to be happy. Happy. Yes, exactly. We want peace. That's yeah. what we want. We want peace. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Whatever we do, usually we do for the sake of our family. So finding someone who can support you, finding someone for whom you want to fight, someone uh -huh. finding someone for whom you want to do uh -huh. and achieve something, believe me, it's a good motivation. Mm -hmm. So think from it that is. perspective. That's yeah, why when you said probably. about losing, I would say I would mm -hmm. challenge your thoughts about it. So it gives me like more reason to show up to work and work harder, yeah. right? Set bigger goals. Yes. Go after more trophies. Definitely. Right. Definitely. Right. That you need the uh, uh, stimulation to do exactly. something. Exactly, because sometimes I think I sit and think to myself, like, what am I doing all this for? Right? Yeah, what, what's, what's the, the reason? Yeah, I can, I can, uh, I got, I got my right. Uh, I got a, I got a bed, and my be belly is full. I can go well, and watch TV all day long. So, <laughs> so you can, you can, you already have a quality life. Let's say, let's put it that way. So mm -hmm. you, let's say you have a decent life. I believe so. Mm -hmm. So you have a car, you have a house, you have a work where you can mm -hmm. come and work and mm -hmm. re, uh, make yourself comfortable and everything. Mm -hmm. But the the thing is how long you will feel this comfort mm -hmm. and how long it's going to last and why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden you start thinking about the meaning of this life mm -hmm. and one of the meaning of this life, I believe, is pass on your knowledge, mm -hmm. pass on your mm -hmm. gens to mm -hmm. the next generation, I mm -hmm. believe. So So that's why don't overthink about what you're going to lose, think about mm -hmm. what you're going to gain. Yeah, Focus sure. on that. I will take this advice into account for how sure. How old are you, by the way? I never uh, ask about it. Um, how old do I look? Uh, I'll say about 25. Listen, I mean, below the 25. Uh, okay. You got it right. I'm turning 25 this year. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yeah. It's right time to mm -hmm. think about it, about the family, about the getting married. Mm -hmm. At least I can see that you're quite successful. You have a quite successful business. So I believe in mm -hmm. financial terms, you can afford to have a family. Yeah, one fun. of the th one yeah. of the things that you think about it, uh, maybe in your case it's different. But believe me, many uh, young people, one of the uh, problems they think about that I should get the house, I should get the car, I should do this, I should achieve this. Then I'm gonna mm -hmm. get married. Uh, well, good luck with it. And I wouldn't say it's wrong idea because myself, I got married very late, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I got married when I was over 30. Wow. So, uh, if you ask me, do I regret it? Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. But I can see the my friends as well and I can see the... The, as I said, the uh, advantages of getting married early as well, mm -hmm. as, as, long, as, as uh, alongside with the disadvantages mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So when I said, if you're ready, mm -hmm. do it. Don't think about it, about that you're going to achieve something, then you're going to get married. It's mm -hmm. not like that. The family, family is not about achieving something. Family is creating something mm -hmm. together. Yeah. It's like a whole different project. Yes. It's a whole different business venture. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Definitely. that is. All right. We did a lot of talking about, uh, you know, family life. And uh, would you like to tell us uh, about things you'd like to do outside, you know, working or spending time with your ki you know, kids or your family? Do you have any, any personal hobbies, pursuits you enjoy doing in your spare time? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So the, what's number one on your list? L things number one in my list. Uh-huh. I like watching animes, Japanese animes. <laughs> anime. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. What's your favorite anime? Um, there are many of them, uh -huh. but uh, I like the work of the Hayao Miyazaki. Mm -hmm. This is a Ghibli studio, if mm -hmm. you know about them. Not really. uh, one, uh, I'm sure you watch them. Uh, uh -huh. One of the, f uh, the famous one is uh, uh, Spirited Away. Mm -hmm. about the girl who got into the spirit world. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, it's one of the first animation who got the Oscar. 
uh, in the history. So it's, uh, but my favorite one from his work is actually uh, Mononoke Hime. It's a prin- Princess Mononoke. So mm-hmm. it's, it's quite interesting. To, he re- in his works he raised quite interesting topics, like? especially about environment. Uh-huh. So I really like the way he, how he delivers, mm. he, uh, how he draw the, his stories, mm. Uh, mm. music he choose. I really like them. Mm-hmm. So anyway, but if we're gonna talk about the series of, mm-hmm. let's say, uh, the, the ones I'm talking about, this is a movies. So it's just mm-hmm. the one movie. But if we're talking about the uh, series, then I would say Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is one of the favorites mm-hmm. one, uh, which I watched a lot. So what do you like about that anime TV series? Uh, uh, no, it's a storyline. Mm-hmm. It was how it's developed and mm-hmm. how it was written. I really, really liked it. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, it was, I think it has got the 64 theories, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And I, I watched them twice <laughs> okay <laughs> so die uh, hard anime fan yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh now uh be having family uh-huh. and work and mm-hmm. uh, all these things uh-huh. happening around it i don't have much time to watch them but at least it's one of it was one of the favorite things i really really enjoyed mm-hmm. when i was younger let's yeah. say at the moment uh, one of the hobbies which i enjoy is hiking to be honest mm-hmm. And uh, why? Uh, so I have uh, I found the one of the group. Uh, it's gonna be advertisement as well. They mm-hmm. called Tainstvin Uzbekistan, Mysterious mm-hmm. Uzbekistan. This is an organization who organized the tours to the uh, mountains, to mm-hmm. the lakes, mm-hmm. and to the very interesting place in Uzbekistan. Mm-hmm. Believe me, there are so many beautiful places in Uzbekistan. You can't even imagine. You didn't even think about it, that that place is exactly in Uzbekistan. when Mr. Akmal showed me a video of a place like a fall. mountain. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought it was some some place in the U.S. I thought it was yeah. some place in uh, far away from Uzbekistan. Yeah, yeah. but it's very beautiful. so beautiful, stunning. Yeah. So I found that I quite uh, got interested on that. So whenever chance I had, I go uh, for hiking. Usually, mm-hmm. it's one day or two days trip. The longest one so far I had it was three days trip. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, that's something that I really advise to anyone who comes to me and asks me what he sh- I mean, uh, mm-hmm. you know what? Why I give the advice to people to go hiking? Mm-hmm. It's help you to get distracted from the all the problems you have in mm-hmm. your life. One of the things is when you go hiking, there is no cell phone, there is no internet. Even if you want to go to use your phone, there is no chance that you can do that well, what if you get lost well <laughs> I uh, hope you GPS. have a guide <laughs> okay. and you have a gps at oh, least okay, that you okay. can use and actually there is a radio that you can use and call for help mm-hmm. i believe mm-hmm. so uh, I, we always go with the guide who mm-hmm. has the experience it's not like i'm going on my own mm-hmm. uh, so it, there is someone person you can rely on anyway mm-hmm. uh, another thing is because you're constantly concentrating on the path you're taking because it's risky so you need to exactly know where you you mm-hmm. uh, where you're walking. So mm-hmm. uh, that's why it makes you concentrate on the past, and you forget about everything else. You yep. forget about your work. You forget about your families. You for issues. You forget about everything else, and you just it's have give you the idea to clear out your head mm-hmm. Re- reset the, your emotions mm-hmm. reset your feelings mm-hmm. and come to the work come to your life again like a kind mm-hmm. of kind of new person mm-hmm. so i really advise to the people who are stressed out in their life who wants to uh, let's say uh, clear their head mm-hmm. i really ask you to go hiking really yeah. just and, and just be in the moment yes be in the moment, not worry about anything Yeah, else. and another another feeling is, which is quite uh, like, is you see the goal, you see mm-hmm. the place you, which you need to reach, mm-hmm. and you just constantly think about it, I can get there, I can get there, I can get there. It is hard, to be honest. Uh, sometimes the, the route and path we choose, it's very hard. I mean, literally one of the... Uh, Last year, I visit. I went to the Arashan Peak. Mm-hmm. It's called Arashan. It's in the Fergana Valley in uh, in Kamchuk. So it is three thousand seven hundred or something like meters above the sea. 
It was quite challenging, to be honest. But when you get there, when you have a feeling that you mm -hmm. can achieve something, that you set the goal and you are in the spot and you're on the top of the mountain, it's like, yeah, that that's... Mm -hmm. That you can start thinking about it that you can do anything you want it mm -hmm. just set the goal mm -hmm. find the path mm -hmm. do little by little and you can reach mm -hmm. whatever place you want it mm -hmm. so it's some kind of challenge mm -hmm. that helps you out to mm -hmm. get more confidence on mm -hmm. yourself and also keep you in shape shape right do, do you ever want to become a professional hiker Ah uh, no 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 no! Not I don't like think so. Take, take up. Oh, well, it's not something that about professional hiker. Uh -huh. I wouldn't say that. But the next stage, I mm -hmm. believe, it's about the how do you call it? Alp alpinism, mm -hmm. probably in English. Like mountain climbing. Mountain climbing. Let's uh -huh. say that uh, when you actually start using mm -hmm. the ropes mm -hmm. and the uh, equipments, that's mm -hmm. something on the next level. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. That it's that's something that I want to do. Mm -hmm. At the moment, whatever I do, it's mm -hmm. about the walking and mm -hmm. a little bit climbing. Yeah. But nothing that close to the ground. <laughs> yeah, cl everything close to the ground. <laughs> literally, I don't think so. I would love to, uh, let's say, do something about yeah. that extreme to that extent. Yeah. But I would love to see one day at least maybe not on the be on the top of the Everest but mm. I would love to go and see the Everest itself uh -huh. one of the things I have in mind anyway oh yeah I've actually seen some podcasts with people who have climbed the Mount Everest and they talk about something called the Death Valley yep like on your way to the top there are bodies yep there are people who try to climb to the top and what happened is run out of supplies or lost track of their way recent, in recent years on the recent as far as i know for mm -hmm. example uh, uh for the last 10 years climbing everest become a uh, like a fad lit, fad, yeah fad, kind of craze thing. everyone yeah. is doing it like everyone is doing that uh -huh. but the everest is not for everyone mm -hmm. you need to realize that uh, actually you can literally die there mm -hmm. that's why there was a lot of amateur people as far as i heard from the people mm -hmm. who is has got the more experience on climbing let's mm -hmm. say uh, they were saying like there was lots of amateurs actually went to the everest to mm -hmm. conquer that mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. top and they failed that's mm -hmm. why there was a lot of death tolls mm -hmm. and the death stories there and literally mm -hmm. it's true that you will mm -hmm. see that uh, graveyard the, of bodies because what they say is uh, let's say when you go to mountain mm -hmm. you on on your own mm -hmm. let's say there is no one who is going to help you out. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if they're going to stop to help you out, mm -hmm. they're going to die too. Mm -hmm. So they, they, no one will risk their own life to save you, your lives. So you need to understand this and when you make a decision to go mm -hmm. to these kind of places. Let's be honest, if you're going to fall in the mountain, who is going to carry you? Are you expecting someone to carry you? It's already challenging for that person and mm -hmm. you're expecting he is going to, uh, I mean, save you? Mm -hmm. That's something that you need to understand. It's not that he is a bad person. It's just the human nature. You take the risk and you have to accept the risk. And and this is what happened in Everest. You know that you can't breathe in Everest without the oxygen mm -hmm. mask, without mm -hmm. oxygen. You can't breathe on the mm -hmm. top. So you need to be very careful to choose the right amount of oxygen you're taking with you mm -hmm. and that you're using it. If you run out of oxygen, that's mm -hmm. the end of the story. You you gotta be you dead. That's it. Mm -hmm. Don't expect that someone's gonna share with you his yeah. oxygen because if he's gonna share, that's it. He's dead with you as well. Yeah. So that that's that's something that <laughs> <laughs> worth to consider before you do something yeah. extremely. Only those people with a death death wish would probably climb that mountain. Uh, well, That's yeah, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, I don't want to mm. disencourage anyone to uh -huh. go into Everest. It's a great place to see anyway. Uh -huh. uh, but it, it think twice before you make any decision. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Not think twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know uh, the analogy in English, to be honest. Uh, neither do I. <laughs> you can, probably they'd say, like, think twice, yeah, think it think through. Think twice or something like that. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, true. Um, Wow. Uh, before I end this chapter, I, there's this question I want to ask you. You said you love watching anime, right? Yeah. Have you ever watched Death Note? Definitely. It's it's one of the on my top list. I mean, 
uh, like let's say there is lots of people mm. who doesn't really anime and doesn't mm. take it it's serious uh, it's seriously. And I said, mm. if you think that way, watch the Death Note. Death, Death Note. That's, that's something that, that you get interested about. That, the only thing that I tell them about Death Note, yeah. wait till the third or fourth series. Uh -huh. I mean, till that, it's kind of mm -hmm. boring. Mm -hmm. But then it's going to get so interesting that, believe me or not, you will watch it till the end until you finish that. Guess what? I actually used to think anime was for kids. Yeah. Until my friend told me that I should watch this anime, Death Note. And I was like, come on, are you, are you kidding me? It's just a cartoon or yeah. whatever. And then I finally watched it, like a couple of episodes, right? I became instantly hooked. Yes. And I binge watched the entire episode, all, the entire season, everything, yeah. all the episodes. Yeah. It's 24 series. Yeah, yeah in, 24 In three episodes. days. And when I was done, I went back and started all over. Yeah, and you I have to understand. You just wanted to understand more and deep what's really going on and what's the. It's, what, and how the did ending you? was shocking. It, it was going. I don't know how to describe it. The story is so enchanting. It's so riveting. Like you're literally glued to the screen and you can't take your eyes off. Do you it, know that the that, uh, the guy, I mean, uh -huh. the main character, eventually mm -hmm. there is a theory, I'm not uh -huh. sure, I think it's a theory that he actually become a Shinigami? Yes, I heard that. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. I, I heard that. I yeah. did. I yeah. did. So, yeah, it's one of the, mm -hmm. in my top list, mm -hmm. uh, definitely. There's not, especially as I said, uh -huh. if you want, if I want to make a, a someone interested in anime, uh -huh. I mean, want to become interested in Ibas, uh -huh. watch the Death Note. Death Note, honest. right. Definitely. For right. Sure. At, the, at the beginning, I was rooting for him. Like I was his fan. Yeah. And then I stopped being his fan. He started, he was the bad guy. Yeah. And then, and then he, I became his fan again. Yeah. It was just, the whole plot was so mind blowing. And I, I, there were moments I'd just be sitting and holding my hands. Yeah. How is that even yeah. possible? Yeah. yeah. It's quite interesting. It, it, it is. It is. What's your favorite like scene of all time? Uh, or what was the most shocking? What was the one, you know, part of the anime that made you just sit off your, this is off your chair? I'm, this is what I'm telling you. I think it was third episode or fourth uh -huh. episode when she talks to the mm -hmm. uh, FBI agent lady, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you remember. So they start, play, they talk oh with each other on the street. My, oh my God. On the street. <laughs> and it was the moment when she almost finds out that who is he he's just playing on the edge to get the information who is she and what her name and just to make sure that's the that's the part which actually make you to watch the whole episode whole the series at once oh so i God. think it was third or fourth it, it was it was oh my please please watch watch this anime you have to watch this anime okay i, if, I wouldn't <laughs> advise for the young people only to the people who is over uh -huh. 20, 20 I would say over 20 not right. for the young people it's mm -hmm. not for the uh, for the teenager mm -hmm. it's not for the people mm -hmm. uh, it's for the adult mm -hmm. it's really for the adults mm -hmm. because the topics they are actually mm -hmm. bringing up is mm -hmm. too complicated to the people to understand it to comprehend it to be right. honest yeah. so I would advise mm -hmm. to someone who has got uh, mm -hmm. a little bit more understanding mm -hmm. of the life and experience a little bit so to watch that there's no to be honest I, I think the reason why people like uh, I, I, I don't know you, but the reason why I like that character so much, the main character, is because I see a little bit of me and him. We all do. We okay. all, we all have that self dialogue. I see. We I all see. think that we want to. We can change the world. We all think that well, we can eliminate yeah. all the evil. Well, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. at some, like, you can see his logic. You can definitely see that uh -huh. the, he he's not the evil. Mm -hmm. He is not the, the bad, bad guy. guy. Yeah. He just he wants to do uh -huh. good things mm -hmm. but with mm -hmm. the evil let's say mm -hmm. uh, the path he choose mm -hmm. the methods he choose is cruel mm -hmm. so uh, actually if you watch a lot of uh, japanese anime mm -hmm. you will find that they they talk about this subject a lot mm -hmm. about the sacrifice about choosing the difficult path mm -hmm. about being the hero and the evil mm -hmm. so it is you will see the certain mm -hmm. pattern in the japanese mm -hmm. anime but there's lots of kind of them. I mean, mm -hmm. you need to decide which one to mm -hmm. see. There is crazy ones as well, right. which you will never understand, which you will never, uh, right. I right. wouldn't advise to watch them as well anyway. So, so one of the lessons I learned from that anime too is like, uh, virtue doesn't always lead to a good life. Yes. Sometimes 
So you know this quote that goes, "A road to hell is paid with good intentions," true. and that anime so perfectly sense. describes yes. that. That's yeah, that's true. That guy had the best intentions at the beginning. Yeah, but still, end mm-hmm. up in hell. Yeah. I would say. Anyway, so another. I, I, if we're gonna continue on this subject, I would advise for the people who likes the technology, who uh-huh. wants to be a bit the understanding of the future, I would advise you to see to watch the anime called the Ghost Shell. Призрак в доспехах. I've seen the movie version, Starling Scarlett Johansson. Yes, but believe me, uh-huh. movie is crap. Uh huh. If you watch the anime, full anime, you will learn and you will see the certain things that definitely you will think about it. I believe that we are heading toward that future, basically. We are. Oh, and I'm, I'm watching it for sure. Yeah. I gotta watch the, it. So there is a different uh, mm-hmm. version of it. Mm-hmm. So uh, watch it and it is mm-hmm. interesting. That's something that we'll think about it. That's mm-hmm. how we where we are going. So, mm-hmm. this is, so they have a quite interesting topics to talk about it all mm-hmm. the time. So, uh, but unfortunately, it takes time to mm-hmm. find the good ones anyway. Mm-hmm. But there is lots of them. Mm-hmm. But for for someone like with a lot of responsibilities, adults, it can be hard to, you know. Oh, my only worry about watching anime at this point is getting so hung up on anime that I. I I get stuck in their world, yeah, and it's hard to pull myself back out of that's that true. reality and that's come true. back to this reality. Here. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so you need to be very careful about it. Yeah. So what? And also, you need to realize that uh, their uh, moral, mm-hmm. uh, let's say, uh, aspects. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably the people who is making this anime is totally different from the what we get used to it. Mm-hmm. So uh, you should have a better understanding who, mm-hmm. as I said, about you need to better understanding who you are and mm-hmm. what's your values mm-hmm. and what's your position in the life to, s- mm-hmm. to seriously to watch the some sort of animes mm-hmm. that made in Japan, to be honest. Some and not them, be influenced by them. Yeah, not right. get into influenced by them mm-hmm. because they raise serious questions. They raise the serious mm-hmm. topics in their animes, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So you can see that. Uh, if you like about, as I said, if you mm-hmm. like something about nature about the uh, interaction of the human with the uh, mm-hmm. with the nature also watch most of the uh, Hayao Miyazaki which were, uh, works animations mm-hmm. they are great about that mm-hmm. uh, they bring up this good mm-hmm. uh, stories really really love them and the recent one uh, which uh, I really liked it it's uh, I guess it's kind of new. I wouldn't say he's a new mm-hmm. but he is younger than Hayao Miyazaki obviously it's um, uh, uh, Mikoto Shinkai mm-hmm. I think his name is Mikoto Shinkai uh, one of his favorite uh, famous animes is What's Your Name mm-hmm. so it's about uh, one girl and one boy who exchange the bodies. So it's interesting. Uh, okay, that that's one is going to be tough to watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's it's very easy going to be honest. Uh-huh. It's it's a, more like a romantic animation rather mm-hmm. than the serious topic. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting to watch. Right. So watch it now. You will like it. For sure. It. For sure. Yeah. After this podcast, my feeling is everyone's going to start watching anime. <laughs> right? no, no. So cuz right now everyone's all about Marvel and DC <laughs> comic book movies, no, right? No, no, but no. but I know after this podcast, anime is just taking over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I watched right. the Naruto as well, believe me. Uh-huh. I read the manga before even the the anime series itself, to you be did. honest. Uh-huh. There was a time when I was so obsessed about mm-hmm. it. Seriously, mm-hmm. I read it till the end of the, what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So that's one of my obsessions as well. I watched the Bleach as well. Mm-hmm. I almost watched the almost all favorite, mm-hmm. all famous anime series anyway. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of... I would say I'm yeah. kind of expert on this field. <laughs> Big anime fan. <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. All right. Wow, that was a, it was a long shoot today. Mm-hmm. We've been sitting and talking for to over two hours. Oh, seriously. Oh, yes, yeah. it's true. It's but, true. But before we wrap this up, I got three more questions I want to okay. ask you so we can have kind of a tradition on this uh, podcast. Let's make it quick then. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, which question? Is uh, so, number one thing is so this is the part where we get a little more deep. Okay. Right. It's about philosophy. Okay. So, how would you describe your personal philosophy? So, if someone were to ask who is Mr. Akmal or who is Akmal Akhrar, so what would be your answer in few lines, ah. in few words? 
someone mm -hmm. who pays the respect or respects the other people's opinion, our people belief, our other people's face. Mm -hmm. Someone I don't like judge anyone mm -hmm. and question anyone about their own actions. That that's the what, who I am. So I don't like being judgmental. I would say. And I don't, what's one of the things that I don't like in our society that we are very judgmental about the other people, but not about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I would say someone who trying to be, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, try not to judge the other people. Just respect their way mm -hmm. of life, respect their opinion, respect their face, respect their belief, and that's it, and live your own life. And be more than be if you and if you want to convince someone, I believe just be the person you are talking about it. Uh, be the person who you referring to. Show them as an example rather than just the talking about it. So live by example by your own being that mm -hmm. person who want to be. Uh, as, uh, did I make it clear? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's... basically, uh, if you have a values, mm -hmm. if you have a belief. Show them to the people by yourself, not mm -hmm. just telling to the people that this is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Just do it yourself, because it's easy to talk about the certain things, and it's very difficult to follow that path and do it, uh, uh, show them in an action. To be honest, that's that's mm -hmm. the, who I am. I believe. And what's one advice? What's one piece of advice you'd give if you could go back in time and talk to your sixteen-year-old self? Don't waste time and don't mu don't watch too much anime <laughs> <laughs> and don't waste your time. Yeah, for sure. And That's a good one. I yeah. liked it. Uh, uh, spend more time on education, mm -hmm. on your own education. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I spent, I wasted a lot of time in my life. Mm -hmm. I probably, I believe that if I invested more time on my education mm -hmm. when I was younger, I would have achieved much more than what mm -hmm. I have at the moment. It's not like I'm not appreciated what I have right now. I'm really, really thankful uh, to what I have. But probably I'm thinking about it. It could be much easier and much faster. Mm -hmm. It's much more pleasant than it, mm -hmm. it now. Believe me or not, uh, when we are all young, we're all thinking about the games, having the free life, mm -hmm. traveling around, mm -hmm. or about the... Uh, let's say uh, mm -hmm. expensive stuff like a mm -hmm. car and mm -hmm. house and everything. It's good things to think about it. But believe me or not, if you're going to focus on your goals, if you're going to work on yourself before the, when you are young, mm -hmm. so if you're going to put more effort on mm -hmm. working on yourself, when you grow, especially after the 30 years old, when you become, you will have a much co uh, comfortable life and you will enjoy that period a lot mm -hmm. because there will be more meaning about what mm -hmm. you're doing about mm -hmm. your life on that period of time. Mm -hmm. So spend and educate yourself and spend more time on your education. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Ak Akmal, thanks a lot for again coming on the show today and sharing all these insights and yeah. letting us into your world. Thank you very right? much and for you to inviting me. Yeah. And have this meaningful conversation. I hope, uh, I always have a difficulties to mm -hmm. express myself, especially in the different languages. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always think that uh, maybe some people mm -hmm. will misunderstand me or mm -hmm. I wasn't able to deliver the what I really mm -hmm. want to think about mm -hmm. it. So don't be so judgmental when you mm -hmm. hear me, to be honest. <laughs> no, your yeah. message was very clear. Yeah. I can so, confirm But anyway, that. I really appreciate the mm -hmm. time you spend with me mm -hmm. having given the opportunity to speak about these topics. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I have never spoken about these topics with anyone else else uh -huh. except my friends uh -huh. and my colleagues so uh, can so i consider myself <laughs> as one of your friends yes definitely <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks. definitely <laughs> the uh i when i met you uh, honestly when i met you uh when i see your qualities when i when i spoken to you and and i said this is the guy i would love to have a friend with oh, to be cool. honest seriously because uh, uh would the see the at some point, I can see myself as well like you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think about myself, going back to one of your questions, mm -hmm. I see myself as an introvert person. I mm -hmm. like being an introvert. I feel mm -hmm. myself as an introvert person, but the person who 
unfortunately in the position being extrovert <laughs> forced to be the extrovert for example yeah. so when i saw you how you think about certain things i said yeah that's mm. the i believe if i was at your age mm -hmm. uh, let's say uh as i said maybe i would have achieved even more than what i have right mm -hmm. now so good mm -hmm. luck with it oh, so, I'm re uh, so don't stop off working on yourself uh, be always positive and mm -hmm. let's say the job you're doing mm. with uh, with your colleagues uh, and I'm not only talking about Alisher I'm talking mm. about the every teachers who is uh, in the education field I mm -hmm. said this is a great job and this is a great responsibility and you are the people who is actually going to make a difference in our society who is going to make the Uzbekistan and Uzbek people mm -hmm. Uh, successful happier mm -hmm. and achieve the great goals mm -hmm. in their life so please don't stop uh, yeah. on your efforts and oh. be our guides in the in the life all so right anyway. thanks a lot that that means so much to me that means a lot all your comments and also uh, that means a lot of responsibility and i'll do my best not to let you down okay. yeah good luck with it all all right. thank you very much thanks a lot for yeah. coming on the show again one more time all right guys Hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was a lot of fun. I don't know you, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And if you liked our content, please don't forget to hit the you know, like button, subscribe, and leave your comments in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Bye, guys. <laughs>